from KPAX and MTN Sports. This is Grizzly Gridiron Classics. In this week's Grizzly Gridiron Classic, it's the turn of the century as Montana welcomed Sacramento State to Missoula for homecoming back in 2000. The Grizzlies dug themselves into a hole early with a big deficit by halftime, but a late comeback put Montana in a spot to take the win before senior cornerback Damon Parker snatched victory from the jaws of defeat for Montana. The first quarter from that game begins after this. It's time for kickoff on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. It's simple physics. An object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an opposite force. No running back in Big Sky Conference history has been in motion more than Sacramento State's Charles Roberts. When he goes, so do the Hornets. But the Grizzly defense is a force to be reckoned with. Adam Boomer and company are hoping to stop Mr. Roberts and squash the Hornets into the ground. It's a matchup Sir Isaac Newton would be proud of. The Sacramento State Hornets versus the Grizzlies. May the force be with you. Welcome to Washington Grizzly Stadium. It's homecoming in Missoula as the ninth ranked Montana Grizzlies get ready to take on the Sacramento State Hornets. Hello, I'm Grayson Davis for Montana's news station. I'm joined by the sports information director for the University of Montana, Dave Guffey. And Dave, we are in for a treat today. These are two of the most exciting teams in the conference, if not the entire country. Each of them has a Walter Payton Award candidate on offense for Sacramento State. That means the electrifying running back, Charles Roberts. Amazing football player, 5'6", 171 pounds, gained 2,000 yards rushing two seasons in a row. He's explosive. He's hard to find because of his size. Great football player. And of course, Sac State's passing game is not too shabby either, Grace. And of course, folks in Missoula know that we have our own Walter Payton Award finalist, and that is Drew Miller. And he will be ready to lead the offense against the Sacramento State D. When you talk Montana's offense, you talk Drew Miller. Only two interceptions all year long, nine touchdown passes, second in the, in the country in passing efficiency. He, he is very, very accurate this year as last year. Grizz need a big game from him today. And of course, everyone here remembers what happened last year, double overtime shootout. We could be in for another thriller. We're excited to bring it to you. Thanks for watching. And we are going to have the opening kickoff when we come back. Welcome back to Washington Grizzly Stadium. Just about ready to get this one started between the ninth ranked Montana Grizzlies and the Sacramento State Hornets. And the folks are just now starting to make their way into a stadium. You may see that it isn't exactly packed right now, but don't be misled. There are people here. They're just still tailgating until this game starts. There'll be 19,000 plus here, Grace. You know that as well as I do. The, the, the the captain's now on the field. We're looking, looking at the coin toss, but uh, great football game as we talked about here last year. Of course, the nemesis for the Grizz was uh, Sac State's tight end, Chris Kelly, now an assistant coach for the Hornets. And uh, we're looking at the coin flip, Grace, go ahead. Looks like Sacramento State is going to take the ball first. And they want that offense on the field, which of course means Charles Roberts. Like you said last year, for those who weren't familiar with the game, it did go into double overtime, but it wasn't a back and forth affair. It was one half for the Grizzlies, second half Hornets. Luckily, double overtime was for the Grizzlies. Exactly. Well, the Grizz led 28 to 7, and Kelly scored three unanswered touchdowns. I think the last score came with about 31 seconds to go in regulation, Kelly. And of course, he, he also scored the first touchdown in the OT. But Montana held defensively in the second OT. Sac State had to kick a field goal. And of course, Nick Walker hits Atu Mold in the Sacramento State, or Sacramento, California native for the winning points. Of course, Nick Walker no longer playing for the Grizz. He's playing at Dickinson State now, I believe. And here come the Grizzlies, storming out onto the field in front of a homecoming crowd. A lot of alumni, alumni parents, 
and of course the always rowdy student section here to watch this one. And there is a little bit of a fear because of last year's game. For the Hornets, it was really that loss that seemed to get them some confidence as far as playing some of the better teams in the conference. And now they have really risen to maybe one of those top four teams in the Big Sky. They were picked, of course, fourth by both the media and the coaches in the preseason poll. What they did was they stumbled early. We were talking about it uh, before the open grace. Uh, they lose to Portland State, which is almost expected. A lot of people are going to lose to Portland State. That was only a 12-point loss. But then they go to Idaho State, upstart Idaho State, if you will, lose 41-39. Hammer Weber State. Last week, Weber State hammers Cal State Northridge this past Thursday night. Interesting league race we've got going right now. Cal State, uh, Sacramento, they continue to be an enigma. Like you said, they lost to Portland State by a score of 35 to 23, but they led that game most of the way. So certainly a dangerous team. We talk about Charles Roberts all the time, but they really are more than just Mr. Roberts. They've got a good quarterback and a pretty solid defense. And, and to me, that score indicates they have a really solid defense. Anthony Daisley, number 43, all Big Sky Conference linebacker. They call him a rover. To me, him and Montana's Adam Boomer are the best two linebackers in the Big Sky Conference. He is a great player, as is Boomer for the Grizzlies. Look for number 43 to be all over the field defensively for Sac State. And of course, the other story we're going to talk about throughout this game is the running back situation for the Grizzlies, or I may even say lack thereof. They do not have the depth that they've had the last few weeks. Ben Drinkwalter out, and so is Johansi Humphrey. Johansi Humphrey, of course, Ben's out for three or four weeks with a shoulder injury. Uh, Johansi Humphrey with a hamstring injury is not even suited up. So what you're looking at are two true freshmen, Tate Hancock, Brandon Malcolm. One of them, if not both of them, could be an integral part of today's football game before it's all over. And, of course, the starter will be Daryl Williams, which we'll get to later. Guy who has played in a couple of games, seems more comfortable running inside than outside, unlike Johansi Humphrey. As we get ready for the kickoff, Snyder kicks it a few yards deep into the end zone. This one's going to be brought out by Lamont Webb, and he gets taken down short of the 20-yard line, out to the 19. Play made by Ike Mincy, a special team star. Nice uh, backup tight end is Ike Mincy. Nice tackle, but Lamont Webb, of course, as we look at these starters. Ricky Ray at quarterback, Charles Roberts, John Morrissey, the tight end, Lamont Webb, Gary Austin, and Scott Town, the three wide receivers. Their offensive line, Doherty, Frank Wagner, Choi, and Hagan. Veteran wide receivers, two redshirt freshmen starting on that offensive line for Sac State. We get ready, first to 10, Ray in the shotgun. Hands it off to Charles Roberts. He gets taken down behind the line by Tyler Mark. Loss of two on the play. As you take a look at the Grizzlies starting defense, Justin Klein, Corey Murtis, Tyler Martin, and Andy Pita. Defense front, Dan DeCoit, Adam Boomer, Matt Steinow, the linebackers, all of them having very solid seasons. And the defensive backfield playing, young, playing well this year. Calvin Coleman, Damon Parker, Trey Young, and of course, Vince Huntsberger, last year's defensive MVP in the Big Sky Conference. Second down and 12 now from their own 13-yard line. Ray again, this time looking to pass. A little screen play out to Lamont Webb. He gets taken down, trips over Damon Parker. A gain of three on the play, perhaps. Actually, gain of about one. So they're going to be in a third and long situation. One thing I should point out, too, we talked about the starters. Justin Klein, we thought, might start. In fact, Justin Brannon, number 99, the senior from Cole Strip, is starting. Klein, of course, been bothered. With that, as we take a look at the replay, Justin Klein out with an ankle, upper ankle sprain, could play today. That was a great play by Damon Parker. He forced that play, number 27 for Montana. Just make a pile. You hear it every once in a while. Lamont Webb couldn't quite clear it. Brings up a third down and 11. Again from the shotgun. Plenty of time for Ray. Fires. He's got his target. That's going to be close to a first down. Very, very good protection. Ricky Ray had plenty of time there. So he finds his man, number 82. We Sean Brown. Look, Sean Brown, as we take a look at the replay. Just got past the yard marker for the first down, so it's a nice pickup for the Hornets uh, in about a third and 11, third and 12 situation. And interesting, I don't think you'll see a lot more shotgunning. I think uh, really, 32 is a lot more dangerous out of the regular formation like that. They pick up the first down, so it's first and 10 from the 24. They hand it off to Roberts, cuts back the other way. 
does a good job of getting anything out of that play, taken down after a gain of one by Corey Murtis and company. There you see the speed of Charles Roberts. Just a workhorse, has 142 carries coming into the game, 900 yards rushing. But you can see he makes a great spin move to avoid losing yardage. But Montana so far has him collared pretty well, but very early in this football game. Game three on the play brings up a second down and seven. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Damon Parker coming on the blitz. They go to the other side. Lamont Webb slips as he tries to make his cut. The pass ball is incomplete. It's going to bring up third down and seven. Excellent pressure there by 99 Justin Brandon. We just talked about him. Uh, started the last three games in place of Justin Klein, who's been out with that high ankle sprain. Justin Klein, of course, a great pass rusher, along with number 37, the senior Andy Pedick from Helena. Very, very good pass rushers. Third down and seven now. Ray back to the shotgun. Two wide receivers on each side of the formation. Here comes Dave DeCoit on the blitz. He fires, gets it out, and the first down made there by number 12, Scott Town, picks up the first down for the Hornets. And both Webb and Town are veteran receivers. Town is more of the possession guy, Webb more of the explosive speed guy. You see Dave DeCoit four there on, on the blitz. And I'll tell you what, Town almost spun away. Matt Steinoff, 41, finally drags him down. But uh, Town's a good, good receiver, especially after he catches the ball. First down and 10. Ray changing the play at the line. He'll stay in the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen. He drops back. Going deep, good coverage out there, and that one almost picked off by Calvin Coleman, who wants an offensive pass interference call. And so do the Partisan Grizzly fans over there on the east side, about by the 25-yard line. Once again, Grace, Ricky Ray had pretty good time to throw the football there. The intended receiver, Gary Austin, as you take another look at it. And Calvin should have should have come up with that one. Had a chance for it, and really the receiver made a nice play, diving for the football and kind of bumping Calvin Coleman in the process. So that brings up a second down and ten. The Grizzlies have yet to really put a lot of pressure on Ray in this game. So they hand it off to Charles Roberts. He's got some blocking, goes up the middle. The hole closes, gains six yards on the play. It's going to bring up a third down and four. And, and Charles Roberts, you can't say enough about the toughness of a running back. 5'6", 171 pounds. You see him get the ball here. And watch this quick cut. Just boom, he's there. He explodes. Decent hole to run through. Corey Murtis drags the first guy to drag him down, 93. But Charles Roberts is, is explosive. He's, got, he's the whole package as a running back. So another third down situation. This time third and four. Ray out of the shotgun again. Hands it to Roberts. Trying to get up the middle. He's going to be short of the first down by a few yards. Andy Pedick on the play. Roberts getting up a little gingerly there, but I'm sure you'll see him come back, as I just talked about. Tough kid. They had converted two third downs in a row. Right there, I'm, I'm kind of surprised they, they went to the running game, but they only needed four yards. Uh, nice defensive play by the Grizzlies in this opening drive. They do a good job bottling up Roberts, who really has not been able to find a crease so far. And so the Hornets are going to have to punt on fourth and four from their own 44. Michael Westbrook back deep to return this. It's a very short kick. They're moving away from it. Westbrook may have touched it, then dives on it. Looks like he recovered. Ooh. I, I think it may have hit number 14, Demetrius Williams, is why I think Westbrook jumped on it, because Williams was really close to the ball. And, of course, what you want to do is say, hey, hey, get out of the way. Don't even get near this thing. It was a 42-yard punt. Not the prettiest-looking thing, but it did give the Grizzlies some trouble there. It's the Grizz offense preparing for their first possession of the game. Drew Miller, Daryl Williams, like we said, in it. Running back Spencer Frederick, the tight end. Dylan McFarland, Zalay, Thusen Thorson, and Kamaloa, the offensive lineman. And, of course, the wide receivers, Atu Molden, Jimmy Ferris, Tanner Hancock, and then some. You'll see plenty in the game. This time, Drew fires to Atu Molden on the quick play. He gets taken down. 
Ooh, in fact, he wants a uh, call there on maybe a little extracurricular activity. He's not going to get it, but they do pick up five yards on the play. Taking a look at the Sacramento State defense. Peterson, Watkins, Roth, and Bajetti up front. All of them very good. Santee Hall and Anthony Daisley, a terrific outside linebacking core. And then the defense backs, Coleman, Gabrielle Williams, and Vince Andrews. All of them very, very active. Brings up a second down and six now from the Grizzly 20-yard line. Miller hands it to Williams. Absolutely nothing there. May have been taken down short of the line of scrimmage. And Santee Hall, number 20, the linebacker you talked about, Grace, a, a transfer from UCLA. And, and one thing we should say about Darrell Williams, you know, he, he walked on here at the University of Montana. He came from the University of Miami where he was a baseball player. He did not play football there. Really hasn't had a lot of reps in, since his uh, senior year in high school. Lee Turner, number 24, the middle linebacker, getting in the hole early. That disrupted the play. Brings up third down and six. Miller back to throw. A little screen pass out to Jimmy Ferris. That one's well short of the first down. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. And so the Grizzlies are going to have to punt. So a three and out for Montana and kind of a discouraging debut for the offense and kind of an impressive debut for the Sac State defense. Well, I think coming into the game, a lot of people figured that this may be another shootout like it was a year ago, but so far both defenses look up to the task. Nice punt by Mike Reedy, driving Lamont Webb all the way back to his own 20-yard line, looking for the crease and a hole. He runns out of bounds at the 34, a 54-yard punt. There is a flag down on the play, and this one may go back a little bit. Well, my guess is it's uh, on the receiving team. Normally, that's what these are, and with uh, that kind of a punt, Montana might just let it go. And that might be Mike Reedy's best punt of the season. It is a season-long, career-long for that matter. Previous long was 49 yards. It was a block on the back, so this is going to move the Hornets back. They will start their second offensive possession at their own 24-yard line. When we come back, the Hornets have the ball. This game is tied 0-0. The Hornets have the ball first and 10 from their own 25 yard line. We are scoreless early in the first quarter. Ricky Ray in the shotgun. Looking, has plenty of time. He's got room to scramble. He brings it down, and now it collapses as Adam Boomer and Corey Murtis converge on the play. That's the old coverage sack is what that is, although I, he, I think he might have picked up positive yards, so the, the Grizz defense won't get credit for a sack. Great downfield coverage, obviously. Uh, Ricky Ray was looking for something deep. I think Webb, had, uh, not Town, had won a, run a post pattern, but uh, great coverage there by Huntsberger and Coleman. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. So that brings up a second down and 10 from their own 25-yard line. And you see the bruiser Wooster, the fullback, in there now. Good blocking back for Sack. Play action. Breaks down. Adam Boomer with the tackle. Catch made by number 89, Russell Gardner. A gain of one on the play. Good coverage for the tight end, Adam Boomer. He can do that. You take another look. Well, Gardner sure looks like a tight end to me. He's a big guy, but he's not listed in the two deep. Uh, Marissi and Loomis listed ahead of him, but of course, once again, uh, 6'3", 231, a big target for Sack. The two completions so far for the Hornets, Gardner and Brown, two guys who are very seldom used. So it brings up third down and seven. Now they swing it out to Roberts, makes a good catch and a move, and he is hit. And it looks like they're going to give him the first down. Damon Parker knocks him out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. And it looks like he's going to have the first. And it, he is so dangerous in a swing pass situation like this. This was set up all the way. Adam Boomer trying to deflect it, just missing it. And, of course, we haven't talked about Charles Roberts as a receiver, but he can do that. He also returns kickoffs. 
just enough. Nice hit by Parker, but not enough. First down, Sac State. Robert showed his hands there. And if he's going to find his way into the NFL, that's something they're going to look at as a fine running back. They love those hands. Oh, a little miscommunication on this play. Broken, but Ray is going to make something happen out of it. He gained six yards on the play. And that actually, I, Roberts is the third leading receiver for Sac State as far as number of catches. That was his 12th catch on the year. Ray made something out of nothing there. Montana defense, uh, once you commit to the to the middle like they did here, here that he bumps into the running back, then adjusts and just goes for broke. Nice block there on Boomer. Vince Hunsberger chases him out of bounds. He may have gotten away with a clip there at the end of the play, but still goes for a gain of seven. Brings up second down and three from their own 42-yard line. Lamont Webb in motion. Ray dropping back, getting pressured by Andy Pettit, who knocks his arm, jumps on the ball. Oh, I think they're calling it an incomplete pass. You can see the referee right there indicating that. His arm went back. This is going to be a very interesting replay to check out to see if his arm actually started to move forward. Did you see Andy Pedic at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, and it looked like it did. And uh, the officials, of course, are told if there's any doubt it was an attempted pass. James Leno, our referee this afternoon, interestingly enough, James Leno is from uh, Sacramento. Oh, just a little uh, trivia. Stirring up low confidence. So look for look for number 32 right now. Roberts, of course, back in the game. Third down and three. They give it to Roberts. He's got the first down and more. Damon Parker and Trey Young take him down, but not after he picks up the first down with 627 left in the first quarter. And that is Sacramento State's fourth first down already of the game. And, you know, Charles Roberts, uh, as I talked about earlier, just a workhorse, carries the ball 25, 35 times a football game and just seems to get better as he as he gets in there. Number eight is his backup, Gerard Barton, now in for Roberts. First down and 10 from the 46. Boomer swings it out to Barton, gets taken down for a gain of maybe two. The last run for Roberts, 19 yards, his first real chance to break one. And that's, a, that's almost a running play, that last play. The Grizzlies like to use this play a lot. Just a little swing pass, almost lateral. And you're looking for a guard or tackle to make a spring block for you. Didn't happen there. There were too many maroon jerseys to block to get anything going right there. The game about a yard makes it second down and nine. Barton still in the backfield. They hand it to him. He's got a little bit of a crease, but it closes quickly as Kurt Coulter comes in and makes the play. And there was really, if, if there was any hole there, he would have had to cut to his left, he being number eight, Barton. And I would imagine we'll see 32 Roberts re-enter the game here pretty quick. Uh, Sacramento State really, a lot of possession time here early in the football game. Montana on its sole possession in this first quarter, three and out. So 4.46 left in the first quarter and counting another crucial third down third down and eight four wide receiver set charles roberts is to the bottom of your screen lined up as a wide receiver ray rolls out he's got all day starting to get chased now a little bit kurt coulter on the run ray's got room to run it's closing down he makes a cut and he is in the middle of the field he's one block away from breaking it he may have gotten it calvin coleman Hits him, but not until Ray touchdown gets into the end zone for a Sacramento State touchdown. That's a great run, a 44-yard run by Ricky Ray, and that uh, this this is one area that Montana has a, had a little trouble with. It, it, you just look back to last year against Youngstown State, a young sophomore quarterback named Ryan, a great scramble, and of course right here everyone's so spread out, the defense is so spread out that. Ricky Ray just takes it and runs with it and had a great downfield block right here by I think that's Town to spring it. Scott Town making the block on Calvin Coleman. Ray doing the rest, working his way into the end zone. The extra point is up and good. 
and Sacramento State has quieted the Grizzly crowd as they take the early seven to nothing lead. When we come back, the Grizzlies will get their second offensive possession. Stay tuned. With 4.26 left in the first quarter, Sacramento up seven nothing. Their last scoring drive, nine plays, 75 yards, capped off by a 44 yard run by Ricky Ray for the touchdown. And it took three minutes and 56 seconds. And that's nothing new for Ricky Ray. That's his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Jimmy Sanchez getting ready to kick it off. This one's going to be taken by Tanner Hancock at the one yard line, following his ball, powers through, almost gets through there, takes it out to the 20 yard line. And that's where the Grizz will start out with it. So he gets a 20 yard return and Drew Miller and company will get their second chance. They did not look very impressive in their first drive. No, they didn't, and uh, you know, Sac State on that one screen pass, that third down screen pass to Jimmy Ferris, they, they had that smelled out all the way. One thing I did do want to mention, Grace, in the open, I talked about uh, Drew Miller. He's second in the Big Sky Conference in passing efficiency and fourth in the country, and he has 12 touchdown throws so far this season. And we've got a new running back in the game. That is Tate Hancock, Tanner Hancock's younger brother, one of those freshmen you talked about. He is now in at running back. Drew, looking over the middle though, fires, finds Atu Molden for a big game, takes it out to the 41 yard line. And we talked about Atu Molden. He's a Sacramento, California native. I think he's from Jesuit High School, having a phenomenal year, five touchdown catches so far. He's a junior, number 17. Like I mentioned, Tate Hancock, Tanner Hancock's little brother, was in at running back. They now make a switch, and they will go with an empty backfield. Five wide receivers, three to the bottom of your screen. As we take a look at the replay, three at the bottom of your screen. Tanner Hancock in motion. They swing it out to him. He's got a little blocking, not quite got the hole that he wanted. And he gets taken down at the line of scrimmage. And Tanner Hancock got punished there. You know, he's not that big of a kid. It's amazing to me. Tanner Hancock was an all-state running back in Salina, Kansas. Of course, he's a great receiver transfer from the University of Kansas, as we all know. But he got popped pretty hard there, and he got popped pretty hard in that kickoff return as well. Tate Hancock coming back into the game broke all of Tanner's records in Kansas as a running back. A little bit smaller guy, but very instinctual. But again, this is his first action as a Montana Grizzly. Second down and nine from their own 42. Drew gives it to Tate, who goes up the middle. There's a flag on the play. Tate picks up six on the play. We'll have to see. I think this is going to be offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think the defensive encroachment, and you'll have, you have to take the penalty because you don't want to lose the down. Nice run by Hancock. Of course, uh, Tate Hancock, the other freshman, Brandon Malcolm, as you see Tate Hancock, with his first collegiate career carry from Central High School in Salina. And well, he's no longer a red shirt with that one play, of course. Uh, offside on the defense, five yard penalty from the called previous spot. Offsides on the Repeat D. second down. And you've got to think that Drew might be trying to go with some type of a snap count to give his running backs, his offense, a chance to, to maybe get a little momentum, get, you know, get that little extra step off the line of scrimmage. And that's a good play for a young running back, just right up the middle, simple handoff, very simplistic, and with that big offensive line, can be a successful play for him. Second down and four now for the Grizz after the offsides penalty. Drew looking to throw. Going for Atu Molden, who can't quite make the catch, thrown a little bit behind him, unable to bring it in. Really good, good pass protection by Montana there. Atu Molden, you see him trotting back, and uh, he was open. Very rare will Drew throw the ball anywhere but where it's supposed to be. Here you see he's got a very good pocket built there, and Atu had to lunge the other way. Another third down situation. Third down and four for the Grizzlies at their own 47-yard line. Drew back to pass again. As time finds Atu Molden again, this time right on the money. Atu fumbles the ball. And it is recovered by Sacramento State. Number 31. And that is Vince Andrews, very active defense back, comes up with 
the fumble recovery, and Sacramento State dodges a major bullet. Andrews is starting strong safety for Sac State. And uh, Atu made a really nice cut. Once again, Drew sets up. It's a post pattern. You see Atu wide open and tucks the ball, puts the ball in his left arm like you're supposed to right here. It's poked out 19 with the play. Tommy Williams, a free safety. So first down and 10 for Sac State, their own 35. The Montana crowd trying to help out the defense. Ray on the draw, breaks a couple of tackles, goes up the middle. Good gain on the play, close to a first down, taken down by Dan DeCoy. See, that's actually not Ricky Ray. That, that is uh, number 16, Garrett White, who is, in fact, a running quarterback for Sac State. Garrett White is the second leading rusher for the Hornets. 17 carries, 112 yards, that's 6.6 .6 average. And when he's in the ball game, uh, you're probably going to see a run. And I'm really surprised the Grizz didn't smell that. I think Ray's back in there at QB now for Sac. Looked like that surprised the Grizzlies, like it surprised me. Like you said, Ricky Ray back in the game. Hands it off to Charles Roberts. Trying the right side of the line, nothing there. Adam Boomer takes him down after a gain of one. And it's kind of amazing if you think about that, that statement really, that they bring it in the running quarterback when Ricky Ray just ran 44 yards for the Sac State touchdown to put the Hornets ahead here in the first quarter. Uh, Looks like a crowd of 19,000 plus here in Missoula, in Washington Grizzly Stadium. Pardon me, that was a second down and one. He picked up the first down just barely. So that gives them a first and 10 from the 45 yard line. Roberts again in the backfield. Ray back to throw. Nothing there, takes it himself. Goes down Ray after a yard, Ray. taken down by Dave DeCoy. True freshman, number four from Truckee, California. Great explosive player. And here you see Ray really didn't give himself a lot of time, but then again, he was getting a lot of pressure. Tripped up there, and then uh, DeCoit with the finishing touches. But, uh, you know, Ricky Ray, I've got to think you're going to tell your corners, your TBs, to try to contain him a little better. Four carries for 52 yards for Ray as he tries the option taken down after a yard or two, taken down by Corey Murtis. And that's the other quarterback again. They're, they're scrambling on me here. 116 and 117, and, and uh, I gotta think you'll see with a third down situation, 17 come back in the game. Ray, the more of a proficient passer. You know, the one thing that was really kind of gets to me on that run by Ray, when he's five yards past the line of scrimmage and yet fakes a pass and the, de the defensive guys bought it. You know, he's not gonna throw from there, but it, it usually works. Not sure that they're going to get the playoff here before the end of the first quarter. They snap it right at one. Lamont Webb Touchdown. wide open, and he is cruising. The only man who has a chance is Calvin Coleman, who knocks him out at the one-yard line. Big play, though, for Sacramento State, and I'm not sure that they got that playoff before the clock ran down in the first quarter. Well, the 25-second clock never started for that particular drive either, but uh, now we're going to have to come all the way down to the other end of the field, and Sac State's going to get the ball what looks to be on the two-yard line. To see right there, Lamont Webb, big play for the Hornets. We're going to take a break at the end of the first quarter. 7-0 Sacramento State. Get ready for the second quarter as Grizzly Gridiron Classics continues. We are back. The Grizzlies, big trouble, down 7-0. Going to start the second quarter. And Sacramento State has it on the Grizzlies' two-yard line after that big pass play to Lamont Webb right at the end of the first quarter. And now it's first and goal from the two for the Hornets. Ricky Ray in the game. There is movement on the offensive line, and this is going to back the Hornets up. Oh, that's it. it. First and goal from the two, now first and goal from the seven. That's a good deal. You could tell something was up. A couple of the Montana Ball defensive start. guys started offense, pointing. Here you see the indication by the official procedure call. And, you know, we talked during the break, 
Grace, you can't turn the ball over against good football teams. Montana with a nice drive going there. Atu Molden uh, gets gets uh, the ball gets punched out. Sac State recovers and of course leads to this possession right here. Ricky Ray, seven of ten for 80 yards, brings up first and goal from the seven. They may have moved early again. That's the fullback Wooster there with the carry, the big guy. There are flags on this play. I think it's going to be against Sacramento State, and I think they're going to continue to back up. On the offense, five-yard penalty. It remains well, first down. And the, you call that the penalty maybe thank the 12th man. Grizz fans going crazy. I'm not sure if Ray tried to audible, but it's really hard to hear the snap count, hear the quarterback when there's 19,000 fans yelling. And that's going to bring up first and goal from the 12, Sacramento State going the wrong way. As the players now, you can see the Grizzly defensive players trying to get the crowd into this one. And this is where Ricky Ray, frankly, gets a little more dangerous. He's got a little more room to run. Ricky Ray is in the game, in the shotgun, right next to Charles Roberts. He drops back, looking to throw as time. Finds his man, Scott Town. And he is down to the seven yard line of the Grizzlies. And that's going to bring up second down. Goal. So he picked up about five. That's very similar to the play Town had earlier, although he broke a couple tackles and made it a little scarier for Montana fans. Uh, both Town and Webb, impressive receivers. Good quickness. And so far, Ray has had time. And he is picking the defense part. When he hasn't had time, he's been able to run well. Yeah. Gonna have to work on that pass rush. And that's why he's out of the shotgun. He's getting a little, little more time because he's out of that shotgun. Second down and goal from the seven. Low snap. They hand it to Roberts. He's got room. He is taken down at the one-yard line by Adam Boomer. Very well-conceived play by Sac State. What made that play? Ricky Ray made a great play fake. And uh, Montana was lucky to stop Charles Roberts right here. Once he gets momentum, it looked like he was going to find his way into the end zone, but as you can see, he comes down at the one. Adam Boomer and Vince Huntsberger on the play. Big play for the Grizzly defense. Third down and goal from the one. Ray gets up to the line quickly, takes it himself, and he gets over for the touchdown. Pretty difficult to stop him on the half yard line. And that gives them a 13-0 lead with the extra points still to come. And this crowd of 19,000 almost dead silent. And of course, what a complete different last year's game. Montana jumps to a 28-7 to a lead. Now, now the Grizzlies are looking at being down 14-0 here early in the second quarter. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, these points coming off of turnovers, something that really helped them against Eastern Washington last week, but hurting them here. Jimmy Sanchez getting ready for the point after. And it's good, and Sacramento State right now is stunning. The ninth-ranked team in the country, the Montana Grizzlies, find themselves down in the second quarter, 14-0. It's been all Sacramento State so far, up 14-0. They just marched down 65 yards in nine plays. Capped off by Ricky Ray's one-yard touchdown run. It took three minutes and one second. Right now, Ray is just killing the Grizzlies. He's got 85 yards passing, 53 rushing, and two touchdowns. And the Grizzlies have run seven offensive plays to Sacramento State's 27. This is not the way that Joe Glenn and company wanted this to go. Well, you can't panic right now. You've got the third-ranked offense in Division I AA, the Montana Grizzlies. Just got to keep going with your game and trying to move the football. The kick goes down to Atu Molden. He's got a little bit of a crease. Works his way past the 25-yard line down to the 26. And that's where the Grizzlies will start out with it. And they need to get some offense going down 14 to nothing. 14.05 left in the second half. But like you said, no reason to panic. This offense can put up a lot of points in very little time. Drew Miller not exactly having a bad day. He's five of six for 43 yards. Penalty assessed at the 35-yard line. A re-kick. Looks like the uh, 
I gonna, it looked to me like the, the player right to the left of the football, the Sac State player, didn't catch his number, did in fact, was about a yard ahead of the ball before it got kicked. And Montana thinks it can get better field position. They didn't really get good momentum on that return grace because of the weird bounce by on the football. So Sacramento State will move back and they'll re-kick this. And with Atu Molden and Tanner Hancock back there, both speedsters, Pretty good idea to just go ahead and let them re-kick it, see if you can really break one here. I don't think anything would be a much more pleasant sight to the Grizz fans than a big kickoff return. Well, and both both Hancock and Otto Molden have been close to breaking kickoffs, four touchdowns, kickoff returns, four touchdowns, just maybe a block away from it. So uh, I, I think you've got to go. Of course, they've got a kick from the 30 now, the Hornets do. So odds are you're going to get the ball in better field position anyway. Sanchez boots this one. Pretty good kick down to the 10. Atu Molden let it bounce when he didn't have to, but the wall is set up. He's got to move. He breaks a couple of tackles, goes up the sidelines. He has passed the 45 yard line to the 46, and it worked out. Making a marine kick. Atu Molden makes a big play, and the Grizzlies are set up in great field position. They, they've picked up about 20 yards on here, and this is scary because oftentimes you'll see the, the back go to his knee. Atu did not, pick it up. Great block by 53, Joel Robinson right there, the freshman from Whitefish. And he's uh, pretty much doing it on his own from here. Nice return by Atu Holden. And of course, he's the player who fumbled, led to the Sac State touchdown. It's kind of nice to see him get some success in that area. So first down and 10 from their own 47. Drew Miller doesn't like what he sees. The play clock running down, so he calls a timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. 13.50 left in the first half. Sacramento State up 14. We're back. The Grizzlies trying to get their way back into this one in the second quarter down 14 to nothing they have great field position first down and 10 on their own 47. drew miller dropping back looking to throw going deep for jimmy ferris that one almost picked off two defensive backs collide and drew may have gotten away with one there i think he did and uh darrell williams the running back was a safety valve might have been a better option to go his way here you see Drew, good protection, good time. I think he just underthrew it. Jimmy Ferris, uh, number eight, the wide receiver, turns into the DB. Drew on second down and 10. Drops back. Get, hands it off to Daryl Williams, goes up the middle for a gain of three on the play. And that gives you a tough third in like a eight situation. So Montana, not a huge factor at this point, but really the loss, Johansi Humphrey, Ben Drinkwalter, I think, is part of the reason you're seeing Montana's offense not quite as effective as it normally is, not to take anything away from Daryl or the young freshman running backs. Just nowhere near the experience as Johansi Humphrey, third down and seven, a passing situation for the Grizzlies. Sacramento State shows blitz, they back off. Miller with time, finds his man, Michael Westbrook, makes a nice catch and a first down. And here's a guy who's slowly becoming more and more part of the offense. He is electrifying when he's got some room. He, he really is, and, and, and what happened was, I think it took him some time to learn the offense, and, and he, he's becoming more consistent catching the football. This was really the only place it could have been thrown, right there, and nice catch by Michael, and he sits down for the first down. He's obviously a big time talent. Drew Miller knows him well, played together in high school and then at BYU before both of them transferred here to Montana. First down and 10. They hand it off to Williams, trying to go up the middle. Absolutely nothing there. Stop on the play made by number 44, Maui Borden. Maui Borden. And Borden, uh, backup defensive end, listed to second on the depth chart, Sac State depth chart, just threw off the Montana blocker and made a really nice play there. 
for no gain. So the Grizzlies still having a hard time establishing that running game. Daryl Williams remains the back. He's in the backfield. This time he's joined there by John Fitzgerald on a second down and 10. Little play action. Drew firing for Westbrook again. He has him. There is a flag on the play. And Westbrook with another nice catch. Just use your hands only, and that's usually a, in the area of holding. And I think that's Drew indicated that to the sidelines. Everybody's backing up. Westbrook did get enough yardage for the first down, but we'll have to see if this one's being brought back. And from Westbrook's body language, it is. Offside on the defense, holding on the offense. The penalty's offset, replay, second down. Well, that's really a break from Montana. If it would've just been a hold, they would've been 10 yards further back. As it is, offsetting penalties, they get to do her again. So it's as if the play never existed. Second down and 10 from Sacramento State's 40, down 14 nothing. The Grizzlies really need to get some points on the board in this drive. And they're going to use four wide receivers in this set. Daryl Williams again in the backfield. Drew back to pass. Has his man, TJ Okers, who has the first down and more taken down at the 26 yard line. Not only that, do they need to, to get some points, Grayson. They need to keep the defense off the field for a while. Sac State has put in some long drives. Miller. With it, really, this is a tough pass. You can't make a mistake on this pass, and he didn't. He rifles it to Olkers, the junior from Helena. So that brings up first down and 10 from Sacramento State's 26. The Grizzlies driving. Olkers on the season, 67 yards and receiving. And here you see Drew Miller out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the right as he rolls out, being chased, unloads. Has Tanner Hancock down at the 10 yard line. That was a great throw. And you could hear the crowd go, ooh, because there was a right defensive end for Sac State. You'll see him coming out of the corner to your TV to right to the right here. He's getting some pressure, and the fans are trying to tell him, hey, here comes somebody, get rid of it. Tough pass on the run to number one Hancock from number seven Miller. And the key for a quarterback is to have that internal clock that tells you I'm running out of time. Drew apparently has that. Rolling out is not his forte, but he did a nice job there. Brings up first down and 10 from the 10 yard line. They go to the little screen to Michael Westbrook. He gets to the six yard line. They cannot get a first down without getting into the end zone, so it's actually second down and goal now right. from the six-yard line for the Grizzlies. Michael Westbrook really made a nice play just to pick up three or four yards. It looks to me like the Sac State defense, the DBs and the linebackers are really well-schooled in what that Grizzly screen play looks. Because when they start to set it up, it looks to me like they react, go to an area, and, and have been, had pretty good coverage on those screen passes. Atu Molden is to the top of your screen. You might see a little fade pass here on second down and goal from the six. Miller rolls out, looking to throw. And that one is picked off. He throws it to number nine. That's Elton Gabarel as he looked for somebody. He chose the wrong place to go, and Sac State comes up with another big turnover. That's fourth interception by Gabarel this year, and Drew Miller looks like he could have really run it here. Instead, he looks, 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 and tried to go to John Fitzgerald, the tight end. Montana actually had three tight ends in the game there, and it might have worked about a second earlier, but uh, he just waited a little too long. Third interception of the year by Drew. Boy, that is absolutely brutal for the Grizzlies. They drove the ball well, looked good. They come up with nothing to show for it except an interception. And now Sacramento State takes over in the shotgun. Ricky Ray, a quarterback, hands it off to Charles Roberts, dancing around in the backfield. And he gets taken down by Corey Murtis, well short of the line of scrimmage. That's a loss of four on the play. 
And this is where the defense really has to come up big after that turnover. And of course, last week at Eastern Washington, the defense came up big. Corey Murtis, 93, as you just talked about, had three tackles for losses against Eastern Washington. And really, that was almost a team tackle for a loss. They, he had nowhere to go. Second down and 16, deep in their own territory, on their own 14-yard line. Ray, back to pass, has time, has his man. Short of the first down, that is number six. Another guy who has not had a lot of receptions, Mike, jo Mike Johnson Jr. with the reception and a gain of six on the play. Pardon me, a gain of 13 on the play, brings up third down and four. Mike Johnson's fourth catch of the year, so not used that much, but seen a little action. And this is, once again, I don't want to harp on it, the mobility of Ricky Ray and, of course, the running of Roberts make this a dangerous play right here at third and four. Big third down. If they can stop him, they'll force him to punt deep in their own territory. Little option play out to Roberts, who has the first down taken out of bounds at the 34-yard line, but he picks up the first. The Sacramento State continues to move the ball. Nice play call once again, and because of the success they've had running at both Roberts and Ray, Montana has to be leery of the rushing attack by the Hornets. And once Roberts gets around the corner, he's tough to, to handle because he's a, he's a, a, must be a 4-4-40 guy. He, he's got some wheels. He's got nine carries for 28 yards. It's not a whole lot for him yet, but they have been relatively effective. First down and 10, they hand it to Roberts. And he gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage once again by Trey Young. And they've gotten some negative plays. It's those third downs. Sacramento State is having some pretty good success. Right now, Roberts is down on the field. And probably just the wind knocked out of him is my guess. But uh, their bread and butter guy, Charles Roberts, as you... And even though they are up 14-0, this is a sight Sac State fans don't want to see. Roberts down on the field. We're going to take a timeout. Sac State up 14-0. Welcome back. 14-0, Sacramento State. Charles Roberts was just helped off the field. He was walking under his own power, but still looked like he hurt his left leg. We'll see if he returns. Second down and 13. Ray back to pass. Getting pressured by Justin Brandon, has this man. Great catch made by Gary Austin. Once again, Montana with excellent pressure, but Ricky Ray, very mobile. I'd be very surprised if you don't see Charles Roberts back in the game. He's walking on his own power down there. As a matter of fact, he's coming in right now because the last year here in, in the Washington Grizzly, he left the game a couple times banged up and came back. So uh, he probably just had a Charlie horse or the wind knocked out of him. Gary Austin makes the great catch, brings up third down and six. A play the Grizzlies need to stop Sac State on. Ray back to pass, he fumbles. He recovers his own fumble, but Andy Pedic falls on him for the, for the sack. And that's going to bring up fourth down and the Hornets are gonna have to punt this one away. I would think so. They got, here, here comes the punting team now. The offense was kind of hanging around the, the field. And, you know, Michael Westbrook, they're going to return this for Montana. You see the replay of Ray losing the handle. Westbrook had a couple pretty exciting returns in the last couple games for the Grizzlies. Had a, a really nice return last week. And uh, we'll see what he can do with this one. Sanchez punting it away. Westbrook has it. He's got a little bit of a crease. Almost breaks it. Gets taken down by number 50, David Hoskins, or Michael Westbrook may have taken that all the way back. That was, that was a basically hung on, grabbed the ankle, hung on, and, and now if you're Montana's offense, you're Drew Miller, you want to come back and, and recover from that costly, what could have been a costly interception. Drew Miller picked off in the end zone, Montana's last possession when the Grizz were knocking on the door, had it first and goal from the 10, came out of it with no points. Well, the defense did their job, making sure the turnover did not translate into Hornet points. So down 14, nothing with just over eight minutes left in the half. Drew Miller and offense taking over, but they fumbled this one. They fumbled the snap, their third turnover of the first half. And, and just, Sacramento State gets the ball back. 
just wonder what's going on out there. It's just uh, Montana had not turned the ball over that much this year at all. And it looked to me like uh, Drew just wasn't ready for it. It actually came off his foot. And of course, right into the hands of a Sac State player, Ricky Ray just recovered his own fumble or it could have been a turn of fortune there. But Montana, three turnovers here already in the first half. Drew Miller on the sidelines, obviously very upset. This Sac State team is good enough on their own. They certainly don't need help from the Grizzlies. First down and 10 from the 47. Ray back to pass. Gets hit by Andy Pedic. Almost picked off by Dan Orizzotti. That'll bring up a second down. And the Sac State just going for the jugular now. They've got the four wideouts. They're gonna. They're trying to put points up on the board right away. And here you see Ray had them, but really couldn't set up as well as he wanted. The tenor receiver, three, Lamont Webb. Pretty good coverage by Montana, but uh, you've got the one thing when you pass rush Ricky Ray, as we see the, the running quarterback now come in for uh, for Sac State. That's number 16, Garrett White. But that that uh, is, a, is a good combination, that Ray and White at quarterback. So on the second and 10, the Grizz defense scrambling. Andy Pedic's going to be called for offsides. Adam Boomer takes down Garrett for a gain of three, but they're going to get Andy Pedic on an offside as the defense just wasn't ready. Well, and, and if Andy Pedic, 37, if he hadn't slipped, he probably could have got back, but he just slipped and he was, uh, uh, the center may have read it. Good play by the Sac State center just to snap it. And of course, uh, it'll stay second down and they'll, they'll get five yards out of the play, they being the Hornets. And you hate to be Offside. hard on the Grizzlies, Defense. but they just have not Five yard penalty from the ready spot. for this game. It remains second down. They're making a lot of mistakes, very uncharacteristic. Uh, last week, Eastern Washington opened the Big Sky Conference season with a 41-31 win at Eastern in Spokane. And the Grizzlies really played pretty air-free football, except for, uh, you know, gave up a couple huge kickoff returns to Lamont Brightful, but really they didn't make that many mistakes in that football game. As you saw, Ricky Ray 10 for 13 for over 100 yards passing. Second down and five from the Grizzly 42-yard line. Ray looking to throw, quick drop, has his man Lamont Webb. He's got the first down, down to the 34-yard line of the Grizzlies. Once again, very effective short pass. That play, if you run it right, is almost impossible to stop. It's a, it's, a, it's a safe pass play. And what Sac State is doing now, just eating up the time, moving the ball down, down the football field, and trying to capitalize on uh, their third turnover of the football game. Brings up a first down and 10 for the Hornets from the Grizzlies 34, Ricky Ray. Changing the play. Drops back to throw. Has time, gets a little pressure from Herbert Fernandez. Fires to the sideline complete. That's his tight end, John Morrissey, for a gain of five yards. Actually got pushed out a little bit short of that, so it's a gain of three. Brings up second down and seven from the 31-yard line. And once again, Ricky Ray with a heck of a lot of time. Brings up second down and seven. The Hornets getting dangerously close to field goal position now with 6.57 left in the first half. Ray hands it off to Charles Roberts. He's got room, he's got a gap. Adam Boomer can't bring him down. Trey Young does, but not until Charles Roberts gets down to the five yard line of the Grizzlies. And I don't think Charles Roberts was hurt very bad. He doesn't look like he's had any signs. He actually had to be helped off the field uh, a couple series ago. And uh, when he gets out in the open like that, he is scary. He just can outrun you or outpower you. Trey Young had to bulldog him down. First and goal from the five. Montana finds itself with its back against the proverbial wall very early in this football game. Only the second quarter. First and goal from the five. They give it to Roberts, looking for room on the right side. There isn't any. He gets about a yard down to the four yard line. And the Grizzlies, this crowd is absolutely stunned right now because the Grizzlies have not been dominated like this at home for some time. They did lose that first game to Hofstra, but that was a close game throughout. Right now, they are getting flat out dominated by Sacramento State. Six minutes and counting here in the first half. 
14 nothing. Hornets knocking on the door again. Second down and goal from the four yard line. Ray doesn't like what he sees. He's going to call a timeout. And we're going to take a break right now. The Grizzlies in big trouble. The Hornets driving with a 14 nothing lead. Welcome back. 5.49 left in the first half. Sacramento stayed up 14-0. And, uh, and they're knocking on the door. White at quarterback. Wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a little option here. The running quarterback, Garrett White in. Charles Roberts right next to him. White on the draw. Takes it himself into the end zone. And that makes it 20 to nothing with the point after still to come. And it looked to me like he'd been stopped a little short, but obviously the officials don't agree, and I'm not the boss up here. And uh, this was an all-out, look at this hole. Excellent hole to run through. The fans are booing because they think that it wasn't a touchdown. You can't tell from that angle. But they got the points, and not only is this crowd shocked, Montana has found itself in a very deep hole, 545 only here in the second quarter. Sanchez on for the extra point. And he misses it. So that keeps it at 20 to nothing. That's about one of the very few positive things for the Grizzlies so far. Last year, Sacramento State coming back from a big deficit in the second half to force double overtime. Looks like the Grizzlies are going to have to dig their way out of a hole to try to pull out the victory here at home. Well, Montana has actually trailed in three of its four football games this year. Uh, of course, the Hofstra game, the only setback of the year, 10 to 9 loss in the opener. But Montana trailed at Idaho, trailed at Eastern Washington. They got the character, they got the talent to come back, but they weren't 20 points down in either of those games either. That, that's, a, that's a three touchdown deficit to overcome. And of course, right now, you're just saying, let's drive the ball, let's look crisp, let's get some momentum, let's score. Even at 20 to 7 at halftime, you've got some momentum. You're going to get the ball at kickoff when, when you come back after the third quarter. Right now, if you're Montana, you just want to execute. Exactly. I mean, right now, the crowd not very pleased with what they are seeing. 20 to nothing for Sacramento State. But like you said, if they can drive the ball, not make one of those mistakes. So we take a look at the drive summary. Six plays, 47 yards. White on the four-yard touchdown run took two minutes and 19 seconds. If the Grizzlies can put something together and score before the end of the half, they will get the ball back in the second half to start the second half which gives them a chance to really get back in this game within a matter of just a few minutes but but the key here is getting that offense to start moving again which and don't turn it over which they've done twice they just turned it over both times sanchez kicks it deep hancock a couple yards deep he's going to down it so they will start out from their own 20 yard line Drew Miller was not pleased the last time we saw him on the sidelines after that fumbled snap. And he and the offense, Drew in particular, the leader of that offense, they have to come out, execute, and be careful with the ball. Well, Montana's Joe Glenn, head coach Joe Glenn, talked about how integral Drew was to that Eastern Washington win by just the way he kept his leadership and his poise. First down and 10 from their own 20 yard line, four wide receivers. Two to each side. Jimmy Ferris in motion. Swings it out to Tate Hancock. Makes a nice play, gaining five. And right now, Tate perhaps a little bit quicker than Daryl Williams. Daryl's had a hard time getting going. Perhaps Tate might give them just that little ounce of quickness they might need at that running back position. Well, talking to the Montana running back coach, Harvey Patton, he said both uh, Hancock and Malcolm, and of course uh, Malcolm, it appears, is, is going to stay in redshirt status at this point, are very good receivers coming out of the backfield. Uh, Tate Hancock, number 30, Grizz fans might remember, number number 30, Kelly Stinsrud, a running back a few years back from uh, Missoula Hellgate. Second down and five. Miller back to throw. Out to Hancock again, but that one gets tipped by Drew Bajetti. Otherwise, Hancock did have room to get that first down. Nice play might, made by the Hornet defensive end. And Bajetti uh, really in really good shape to intercept this ball if it would have been, been a little lower. 
you can see he tips it and it, it was once again a safe call but a good call because Hancock had some running room out there crucial third down and five from their own 25 yard line the Grizz trying to get something going before halftime four wide receivers Jimmy Ferris in motion at the bottom of your screen comes across the formation he has it, keeps his feet just long enough to get the first down. Tough throw made by Drew Miller and Jimmy Ferris. I mean, that's that's what you get out of leadership. He, well, he's just a winner. He, he, doesn't, he does not want to lose his football game, as do any of the Grizzlies, but this is a great effort. Drew rifled it in there, and just to keep your footing in that situation enough, to get that first down, uh, he fumbled, of course, but the ground caused the fumble. Montana, with a, with a, as you said, a good first down, a big first down at this point, Grace. If he goes down, he's three yards short of the first, but he picks it up. So first and 10 from the 31 now. Drew back to throw again. Looking for Tanner Hancock, who has it. Gets out of bounds. Three yards short of the first down. That's going to bring up second down and three from the 38-yard line. Nice throw by Drew Miller, the Montana quarterback. Quick hitter, one, two, three, drop. Set your feet, throw. Hancock did a little dance and picked up uh, about three or four extra yards on that. I see some single coverage down here on Jimmy Ferris, a little bump and run type coverage. If they continue to do that, look for uh, Drew to look deep. If right now they're giving him some cushion though. Second down and three. Spencer Frederick in motion. They hand it off to Tate Hancock. Looks to go up the middle. Takes a big hit, though, from a guy you talked about earlier, Anthony Daisley. Haven't mentioned him until now, but he's a big-time player. The fans, you might hear the fans, they, they think that Sac State was offsides. You see the foot right there. Couldn't tell if he had broke the, you know, gone, gone past the plane of the imaginary line down from that football. But, uh, you know, that's Tate Hancock at 160 pounds. Uh, meet Anthony Daisley at about 220. Another big third down, third down and two now. Miller back to throw, looking, has Jimmy Ferris on the sideline, spins away, big game for the Grizzlies. They pick up the first down and move to Sacramento State's 42-yard line. And they are locked They're, up. I believe their helmets might be stuck together. Either that or, or the DB's hurt, one of the two. Yeah, the DB is hurt. It's number nine, Gabrell, who had the interception in the end zone. And it could be just a win knocked out of him play, but uh, you could tell that you want to be careful before you move. Jimmy Ferris, though, with a couple big first down catches for uh, uh, the Grizzlies in uh, third down conversion situations. Gabrielle, I talked about when he made that pick, the fourth interception of the year for him, one of the Big Sky Conference leaders coming into this football game. Their defensive backs are very active. Everyone talks about Charles Roberts, perhaps Ricky Ray from time to time. But their defense is pretty solid. One of the better ones, certainly, in the Big Sky Conference. As you see, Gabriel, that's a good sign. Gets to his feet, walks off on his own power. Like you said, maybe just a little bit of a stinger. Yeah, the wind knocked out of him. Wind knocked out of him. Miller now 13 of 17, 121 yards. Made one bad throw. Unfortunately, it was costly. Through that one interception. Yep. First down and 10, Sac State 42-yard line. Drew back to throw. Has Spencer Frederick, his big tight end. He gets turned around. That's another first down as he makes his way down to the 27-yard line of Sac State. And that was a really well-conceived call. The tight end, of course, very effective in Montana's offense now. Here, you see 43 Daisley trying to get uh, the, with the pass rush. Nice block by Kama Kanakamaloa, number 67. And the, the big guy from Scobie, uh, excellent hands. Of course, converted defensive lineman. I've talked about that. But uh, Spence, uh, very good hands. Big target for Drew Miller. So another first down from the 28-yard line of the Hornets. 253 and counting in the first half. Sac State looked like they jump off sides. It's going to be called. Drew Miller, great play action fake. Looks for Atu Molden, unable to connect. But I believe they're going to get Sac State on the offsides. Yeah, at least it was a free play. Atu Molden had made a break. He was open there about in the five-yard line. But uh, 
I think Montana will re retain first down and pick up five yards on this one. Offside on the defense, five yard penalty. It remains first down. And indeed that is the call. So the ball will be moved to the 23 yard line. That's Sac State's fifth penalty for 30 yards. One of the few things that they have done poorly, pick up a few penalties, but they have played very, very well in this first half and they've got a 20 nothing lead to prove it. Montana moving though, four wide receivers now, 246 left in the first half. Tate Hancock in the backfield. Miller looking to throw. Has time, going for the end zone. Threw that one away. It's it kind of hard to tell if he was throwing that one away or, or just misfired. It was kind of hard to tell, and that's what uh, we wish he would have done a couple series back when he had, Montana had the ball second and goal on the seven. Got picked in the end zone. Montana had gone to their uh, four wide receiver look there. This this time they're they're switching the tight ends back and forth. This time both Fitzgerald 44, 43 Frederick, the tight ends back in the football game right now. Second down and five from Sac State's 23 yard line, down 20 to nothing. Miller, play action rolls out. Had nothing there, but there is a late hit. Drew Bajetti absolutely leveled Drew Miller after he delivered the ball. Drew really had nobody open. Went for, for John Fitzgerald, but this is a costly mistake for Sac State. Well, that's okay. I, I mean, that, that to me, they, he high fives his teammate after getting the call. That's not right. I don't like that. Uh, it was it was a it, if you're a Montana fan. The passer on the defense. As you hear the the penalty right here, obviously you like it. But Bogetti, after he made the play, high fives one of his teammates. And that's not right. Automatic first down. Well, it's going to cost them, and the Grizzlies hoping that they can turn that mistake into points yeah. as they continue to move. Still 235 left in the first half. As you take a look at the throw. Didn't really have anyone open. No, he didn't. He overthrew it, and he intentionally overthrew it. But he he had let go of the ball. The, the DB, the defensive end, was two yards back, and then he kept coming at him. So uh, costly. Let's hope so if you're a Montana fan. First and 10 from the 11. They can get a first down without getting into the end zone at about the one-yard line. They pit, throw it out to Tate Hancock. Nothing there. He gets taken down, maybe gained a yard on the play. Yeah, he might have picked up a yard, but once again, uh, we've talked about how prepared Sac State's defense is for the, those quick hitters by Montana. Really, Tate Hancock didn't have a lot of room to run there. So far, Drew has had success going down the field with the ball. As far as those screen plays, Sac State has been ready for him. Second down and 10 from the 11-yard line. Tate Hancock in the backfield. They show blitz, back off. Drew looking for the end zone, overthrows that one, didn't have anybody open. This is going to bring up a crucial third down and 10 for the Grizzlies. And you wonder if Drew is rushing the ball a little. Sac State has a pretty good pass rush going. Uh, I think Drew's looking at the official, going to go with a timeout right now. They want to discuss this, perhaps the biggest play so far in the game. You take a look, Drew. Really nothing there. Spencer Frederick covered pretty well in the end zone. Yeah, he was going there all the way. He was looking right the entire time. That's the play he wanted to go to. I thought he might look at Tate Hancock, uh, the, the back going out of the uh, backfield. He had run down the middle of the field. Looks like he had a little running room, but uh, he was definitely looking for Spencer Frederick all the way there. Now I'm sure one thing Sac State is talking about, and they're fully aware, is Atu Molden fade pattern to him of course that was the play that ended last year's game in double overtime and Atu Molden with that fantastic height that he has and leaping ability maybe a play to go to here and it, definitely because especially on the left side with with Brandon Coleman at 5'8 Atu at 6'2 they actually the, a couple series ago you might have noticed Atu was set on the left going in the pass pattern, going to go out to the left in that uh, second goal situation for the seven. And the Sac State coaches are yelling at the at the corner, look, look like, look up like this. And, and like I, you know, I thought that's what we might see, 
but of course that's when uh, Drew threw the pick. But Atu Molin at 6-2 and the DB at 5-8. That DB being at number 26, Brandon Coleman. Huge play for the Grizzlies. Third down and 10 from the 11-yard line. Minute 50 left in the first half. Drew drops back. Time breaking down, doesn't have anything, and he gets taken down by number 91. That's Blyle Watkins. He really got lucky to have that sack, but great coverage, and Drew just didn't want to make another mistake. Yeah, obviously, that must have been great coverage because Drew had plenty of time. Look at this. He's looking in the middle of the field, and, and just goes down. He, he almost thought about throwing it, but uh, he didn't. So Chris Snyder in for the field goal just to get some points with a minute 13 left in the first half. Snyder's kick is up and no good wide to the right. And nothing seems to be going the Grizzlies way as Snyder misses that one. And there's still a big, giant, fat goose egg where the Grizzlies score is supposed to be 20 to nothing. And right now, I would imagine the Grizzlies just want this half to be over, go into the locker room and figure out what they can do to turn it around. And, and it's not as if they're not having success moving the ball. Well, it's the, the first time, it would be the first time this year that Montana failed to score in the first half. They actually uh, just scored three points against Hofstra in that first half. And of course, uh, that was a rainy, completely different conditions than today here at Washington Grizzly. So the Hornets take over. Garrett White in at quarterback, pitches it out to Charles Roberts. Charles gets Roberts out to, to the 23 yard line. Gain of about four. As it looks like Sac State is pretty content to just go ahead and run out the clock. I think if you had told their coaching staff you'll go into the locker room with a 20 nothing lead over the Grizzlies in Washington Grizzly Stadium, they would have thought you were crazy. Exactly. I think a lot of people would have thought you were crazy. Uh, as we talked about, we expected a shootout here. We expected a close game. This lopsided score has got everybody by surprise, including us up here in the booth. 29 seconds and counting as they just hand it off to the first back. Mike Wooster piles his way for about two yards. And that'll more than likely be the last play here in the first half. And the Hornets more than content to go into the locker room with a 20-0 lead. And the Grizzlies have just shot themselves in the foot so far this entire game. But like we said last year, it was a story of two halves. The Grizz fans hoping that that's the case again this year. Definitely. Down 28-7 last year. Sac State comes back and ties it, forces an overtime game. Montana has moved the football. Uh, it, if you have one concern right now, it's that uh, Drew Miller has had time to throw, just has not been able to find guys, and you've got to credit the Sacramento State defensive backs for that. Well, we are going to break. We'll have halftime festivities coming up right now. Sacramento State up 20-0 at the half. The second half of Grizzly Gridiron Classics starts now. Right now, the Grizzlies need to take care of business. They need to come out, get something going right from the very beginning. And the good news is they do get the ball to start the second half. And a huge kick return would just set everything up. You always tell, every coach tells you that first play, the kickoff of the second half, is so important because it sets the tone for the rest of the game. As well as the opening drive, your first possession. Offensively here, Montana gets the ball back. Uh, did not score in the first half. First time this, this season in five games. The Grizzlies have not scored in the first half. But what Drew Miller needs to do now is just, hey, be the confident guy he is. Don't worry about the turnovers. Be aggressive. Be yourself. And Montana should be fine offensively if that happens. Yeah, at this point, down 20 to nothing, really nothing to lose. Yeah, really you, you, pull every rabbit out of the hat and, and go for every single play and uh, see if you can get yourself back in this game. Particularly on that first drive, like you said, if they can go down and get a touchdown, all of a sudden 20 to 7 doesn't look impossible. Sanchez ready to kick this one off. Tanner Hancock and Otto Molden deep for the Grizzlies. They've had a couple of nice returns so far in this game. 
Been pretty close to breaking him. This one's going to be pretty short. Tanner Hancock takes it. He's got a crease, a little bit of a wall, closes down. Still, decent return out to the 27-yard line, and that's where the Grizzlies will start out with it. Actually, it's interesting. It's not Sanchez doesn't kick off. They're tied in at Marissi, 83, is the guy who's been kicking off for him. Sanchez, apparently, just a PAT field goal guy. Marissi, the tight end, the big guy, uh, just trying to get a little distance out there. Once again, we've talked about how close Montana has been to breaking one. Right there, Tanner Hancock looks like he, if he could have got by that one tackler, might have had a chance to go a long ways. First down and 10 from their own 28-yard line. Daryl Williams, the running back. Miller drops back, looking to throw. Has his man, Jimmy Ferris, makes the catch about a yard and a half short of the first down. Comes up a little bit gimpy, but looks like he's just fine. Of course, Jimmy Ferris was, got, was uh, hurt a, li a little last year, never been injured. He was talking about uh, how difficult that was during the season. Came back, of course, had another great year as he's having this year, but that's a tough catch. You can see he kind of got rolled on the ankle by the tackler, number nine, Gabrielle, who's back in the game. Second down and one from the Grizzly 37-yard line. Drew handing it off to Williams. Nothing there. Gets absolutely stuffed, taken down by a host of Hornet tacklers, including Adam Roth and Drew Bajetti. And it really had no running room at all, Darrell Williams. It, if you watch this play again, uh, you can see, you can't see the linebackers. The linebackers are ac actually are going to where the the play is going to be. They're guessing that he's going to go to the to the tight end side, which is what happened there. The linebackers read it, and they were there to, to make the stop. Big third down, third and three for the Grizz on their opening possession of the second half. The Hornets show blitz. They're coming. Plenty of time. Throw. That's a great and catch. And that is caught by Tanner Hancock, who had fallen down and somehow found a way to get his hands underneath it. That was an incredible catch. Tanner Hancock had slipped to the ground. Drew Miller had excellent time here. you got to give, once again, credit to the Montana offensive line. Drew rifles it in there. You see Tanner slip. And his, his arms were underneath it, and nice catch by the senior. Awfully hard to tell from the replay, but the referees and the linesmen in good position to call that. Call it a first down from the Grizzly 47 now. Big play. They give it to Daryl Williams. Finally has just a little bit of room, but then it collapses again. Gets a gain of two, maybe three on the play. He's going to bring down, bring up seven, second down and a long seven. It actually looked like he had a little running room there, but uh, you, we've talked in the open, Grayson, about Sacramento State's defense maybe being a little underrated. I think that's true. I think they've got some really good team speed on defense. Second down and eight. Drew, back to pass. Had some pressure, but gets it off to Jimmy Ferris. There's a flag back in the offensive backfield, and this one might be a hold on Daryl Williams. Because Daisley, 43, uh, really probably would have got to Drew. It, it's almost one of those good holes, if there is such a thing, because I think Daisley could have done some harm on quarterback Drew Miller there. Uh, Williams, you know, it's a tough matchup against Daisley, who is a talent. 6'2", 220, All Big Sky Conference last year. So tough penalty for Montana after they had appeared to have picked up the first down. Um, but I think that's maybe one that we could have uh, flagged, we could have thrown from up here. It, it was fairly obvious. Brings up second down and 18 from their own 39-yard line. Jimmy Ferris just off your screen to the bottom, moving in motion. Drew back to throw, has time, going deep for Jimmy Ferris, just overthrown. Look in the middle of the field, tight end 43, Spencer Frederick had done like a corner uh, to the post, faked the corner, gone to the post, and he was open. Jimmy was open, uh, Drew threw it over the wrong shoulder, and this is a situation as an offense uh, that is not a good deal, third and 18. 
Third and 18 now from their own 39 yard line. This is oftentimes, of course, uh, when you really want to blitz, when it's an obvious passing situation. Miller back to throw, going deep, has Tanner Hancock, who's unable to bring it in. And the Grizzlies are going to have to punt and hit him in the hands a little bit high, but probably a catch that Tanner would admit he should catch. Yep, and that's, the, you know, especially after making an incredible catch a few plays earlier. Drew lofted it, and really uh, it was pretty well thrown. Tanner, not a real tall guy, had to go up in the ladder and just off his fingertips. So Mike Reedy back to punt. It's off a pretty good one. Lamont Webb's gonna have a chance to return it. Taken down though at the 20 yard line, 46 yard punt for Mike Reedy. Nice tackle by 44, John Fitzgerald. Grabbed the ankle and held on. And now the Grizzly defense is going to have to come up with something big to help get the Grizzlies back into this game. Three turnovers absolutely killed the Grizzlies in that first half. They need to get some turnovers of their own. Well, you need to get a break or two right now. Down three touchdowns if you're the Montana Grizzlies. Sac State, to their credit, the Hornets have not made a lot of mistakes at this point of the game. Ricky Ray in at quarterback. Charles Roberts in the backfield. They give it to Roberts. Got a hole. Closed down by Adam Boomer. Gains about four yards on the play. And he had a crease to run through there, 32 Charles Roberts. We've talked about this record setting running back for the Hornets. Nice block there by his guard and his tight end. And Boomer just wrestled him down. Nice defensive play by Adam Boomer. Brings up second down and six. I would expect to see a lot of Charles Roberts as well as Sacramento State has this. 20 to nothing lead as I say that though Roberts leaves the backfield looking to throw his way going for the sidelines thrown out of bounds going for Lamont Webb good coverage though by Calvin Coleman excellent coverage and I, I, I would tend to agree with you I, I, I thought I was going to say you'll probably see Charles Roberts carry the ball a lot and short passing smart safe type stuff here you see Ray once again decent time 92 Tyler Martin with pretty good pressure but that wasn't there, and I think Ray probably just threw it away. Brings up a big third down now for the Grizzly defense, trying to get a stop, also trying to get the crowd back into this. Ray, 12 of 17, 114 yards in a passing situation here on third and six. Charles Roberts is in the backfield. Ray back to pass. Getting pressured by Andy Pedic and taken down as both Andy Pedic and Justin Brandon come in for the sack. And Justin Brandon's hurt in the play, 99. You can see he's raising his hand. There's a flag on the play, though. Not in a very good uh, spot if you're Montana. Might be defensive holding here. There was no play prior to the snap. Delay of game on the offense. Five it's a delay of game on the offense, which actually helps out the Hornets. But because it was a dead ball foul. Well, that's incredible to me. You gotta blow the whistle and stop the play. You can't let it go on like that. The officials have to take a little better charge than that, in my opinion. Andy Pedic easily right there on that sack. I mean, if he <laughs> lays Ricky Ray out, all of a sudden Sacramento State loses their quarterback on a play that didn't exist. We just talked, we also just talked about breaks. There's another break that went against Montana instead of a sack and a fourth down is to delay up game. Third and 11, Grizzly defense digging in. Ricky Ray getting pressured again. This time he fumbles. Andy Pedic there, Adam Boomer falls on it, and it is a Grizzly football, and there is a break for the Grizzlies. Okay, we'll, we'll call it even on that one. So now the Montana Grizzly offense set up with a pretty short field to work with of six yards. Great pressure by Andy Pedic, and Adam Boomer falls on the ball. Take another look. Ricky Ray had wanted to go wide. Pete changed his mind, strips him right there. And there go Andy's fighting to the football, as are a lot of his teammates. Johnny on the spot. Adam Boomer, of course, who has a couple interceptions coming into the season as well. So the defense does their job. They get the turnover. Drew Miller trying to quiet the crowd. They oblige. First and six. First and goal from the six. 
Miller hands it off to Tate Hancock going up the middle. And he is close. Nope. They're not ruling a touchdown. They're going to mark him about a foot short for little guys. Pretty good power running right there. And a pretty good hole, too. Tate Hancock's got to be fired up to get an opportunity. Look at this hole right here. Nice block by the line. Good surge. And he just came up short. You might see Drew Miller try to sneak it over like he did at Eastern Washington last week. Just follow Matt Thuse in the center right into the end zone. Second and goal from the one-foot line. Drew Miller. Going to hand it off to Tate Hancock, who dives over for the Montana touchdown. The crowd is back into it. The Grizzlies are excited. There is a flag on the play. Hold on one second. There is a flag. And I think it's uh, the number nine was arguing with the official. Number nine, the defensive back, Gabarel for Sac State. So I'm not sure if it was a, what exactly it was, but Unsportsmanlike is my guess. Yep, unsportsmanlike personal foul against the Hornets, which will be assessed on the kickoff. Tate Hancock, though, you got to be excited for him. Uh, first career touchdown, first college game today. Look at that hole. I mean, Thatcher's that middle part of the line. Thatcher's laid Thusen. They just on the buried the Sacramento the State the defensive line on, on really the time. last two plays there. They really asserted themselves. That's really true. And, of course, uh, I don't want to overemphasize this, but this PAT, considering Sac did miss a PAT, uh, they're all big right now if you're either team. Of course, Montana wants to stay a point up down the road. They're looking down the road, of course. Chris Snyder. In, gets it up and good. So after missing the field goal, he rebounds. And we are going to take a break. The Grizzlies starting to claw their way back down to Sacramento State, 20 to seven in the third quarter. Welcome back. The Grizzlies just scored their first points of the game. Two plays, only six yards. Tanner, pardon me. Tate Hancock, the one-yard touchdown run, the first as a Montana Grizzly. Took 43 seconds in the crowd, and everyone is fired up as it is now 20 to 7. As the Hornets return the kick over the 20 to the 24-yard line, where the offense will take over, and it was the Grizzly defense setting up that last touchdown as Andy Peden came around the right side, sacked Ricky Ray, stripped the quarterback. Ooh, there is a man down for the Grizzlies. I can't see the number right now. And that was Roberts on the return. It amazes me that you have your leading running back returning kickoffs like that. He was already nicked up earlier in the game. I cannot see a number. I can't either. The man that's who's down. Uh, Maybe we can see it here on the replay. Athletic trainer Dennis Murphy out there along with J.C. Wida and uh, Dr. Arbach, Richard Arbach out there on the scene. Look like Ike Mincy coming across, hits somebody. They met head on, which is always a little bit scary. Yep. And it does appear that there's something uh, with the head or the neck. I hate to speculate about anything with that. We're going to take a break right now. Stall in the action right now. Montana down 20 to 7. Well, as we take another look at the replay, I believe it's Kyle Scholl, number 25, getting hit by Ike Mincy. But a good thing right now, if you take a look, he is getting off the field. You see Ike Mincy comes across. They just meet head on, which is always scary to see. But it is Kyle Scholl, but he got off under his own power. And that is definitely good to see. Could be a, a concussion or a stinger or something like that. But from the way the play looked, could have been much more serious. So that's a good sign. First and 10 now for the Hornets from their own 23. The 13 point lead. Ray looking to throw, throws it out to Charles Roberts, makes a move, makes several moves. Tough to bring down. They finally do about a yard short of the first down. And Charles Roberts probably just tired on this one. Looked like they had this play defended pretty well. It just shows how hard he is to bring down. He is just so dangerous. Watch this. This is not that easy. Turn, spin. He was 
he was dead meat there and all of a sudden boom he uses that speed and and uh, quickness and made about five more yards on a really nice cut makes it second down and two now for the Hornets Ray drops back again getting pressured again he airs this one out over the sidelines and apparently he was far enough out of the pocket to go ahead and throw that away. Andy Pedic wanting the the intentional grounding call. Yeah, that, that was close. And then, you know, that's it's a somewhat of a subjective call anyway, that grounding call. Excellent pressure. What they're doing now is they're trying to contain him, make him not allow him to go outside. 91 Tim Bush, the freshman from Kellogg, Idaho. And I should mention uh, Kyle Scholl, the injured player. 25. He's from Parker, Colorado, a freshman. Jarrett White, the running quarterback, now in again. He tries to run it. He gets absolutely stuffed on third down and two. He is short of the first down. So again, the Grizzly defense for the time being doing their job. It looks like the Hornets are going to punt again to the Grizzlies. As you see Tim Bush, the man you just mentioned, coming up big for the Grizzlies. Uh, he, he was a walk-on at Montana, of course, earned a scholarship by his great play in the spring. Just a freshman from Kellogg, Idaho, and, and what an impressive young football player he is. So Jimmy Sanchez back deep to punt. Michael Westbrook back deep to return. Very high, booming punt. Westbrook calls for the fair catch. Terrific punt by Sanchez, but they're going to get the call. And this is the two-yard halo rule. You have to give Westbrook two yards in order to catch that ball. And they're saying that uh, number 11, State Matt Williams, was in that halo. 51-yard punt. Well, and that was an excellent punt by the Hornets, but that's really difficult as you hear the call. Bell. On the kicking team, five-yard penalty. Just like you called, Grace, it's only a five-yard penalty Push anyway, out. but that's so hard as a defensive player. It's so hard to slow down right here, and, and uh, really, Michael Westbrook called fair catch fairly late, but nevertheless, it was a good call by the official. So the Grizzlies come out first and 10 on their own 24-yard line, down 13. Fitzgerald in motion, Hancock in the backfield. Hancock looking for something, finds nothing, finds about a yard on the play. Taken down by Santee Hall. One of the players they're very excited about at Sacramento State, a transfer from UCLA. 6'3", 250, outside linebacker. That's a, a lot of meat at that position. And uh, as you said, Hall, a transfer from UCLA where he saw quite a bit of action. Second down and eight now for the Grizz. They bring in four wide receivers. Tate Hancock in the backfield. Miller looking to throw, has all kinds of time. Finds TJ Okers, gets across almost up to midfield, out to the 48 yard line. Big play for the Grizzlies. Credit the offensive line. Exactly, and that's the second time that exact play has worked. Volker's excellent quickness, and he's fired up too. You see 18 springing out of bounds. They're jumping up and down to check it out. But. It seems like the offensive line has really come out here in the second half and asserted themselves as, as well as the defense. They have really been able to protect Drew nicely so far in the second half. Brings up first down and 10 from the 47-yard line of the Grizzlies. Drew back to throw again, pump fake, going deep for Jimmy Ferris. That one overthrown, and that's good because Jimmy was covered. Well, the defensive back never bought in the pump fake by Drew Miller. This has worked a couple times for Montana. Of course, Jimmy Ferris with sprinter-type speed, as do several of the Grizz receivers. Uh, pump fake, no one bought it. Decent time. Ball was overthrown, which is what exactly like you said, Grayson. That's where you needed to throw that one. So that's going to bring up second down and 10 from their own 47-yard line. Three wide receivers now. Michael Westbrook up to the top of your screen. Miller back to throw again. Again, all kinds of time. Fires over to Atu Molden, who is actually at the top of your screen. He makes the catch. That's 11 yards on the play and another first down for the Grizzlies. 
And even though Montana's running game, as you see Drew Miller back again in the pocket, excellent time. Look at that little cup in there. Looks, looks, looks to his right first. Nice comeback by the 17, Atu Molden. But just the limited success Montana is having in its running game might be forcing Sac State to play a little more honest defensively. Looked like Miller had enough time to look off his primary receiver secondary and go to Atu Molden for the first down. Now at the 42-yard line of the Hornets, they hand it off to Hancock. He's got a little bit of room. It's about, they haven't had a ton of room, but, but that was a good little crease just trying to keep the defense honest at this point. Picked up about three yards. Yeah, you have to. You have to show him that because, to me, the, the, the play fake works so much better if, in fact, you show run every now and then. We talked about Montana had only run the ball six times in the first half. You've got to at least show the threat of it. And, of course, uh, Tate Hancock had a pretty nice run there on that touchdown drive by Montana earlier. Second down and seven. Sac State showing blitz. They come. Miller fires over the middle. Looked like he got tipped right at the line of scrimmage. It did get tipped. Couldn't tell by who. Middle of that Sac State defensive line. And pretty good pretty good press there by the Sacramento State defense. Uh, Drew wanted a little more time there. 90. McCoy. To take a look. There it was. It looked like he threw it right off the head of his offensive line. That's exactly what it looked like. Yep. And so now another crucial third down and eight. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen. Miller back to throw. Sac State bringing the blitz, but there's time as he finds Jimmy Ferris for a first down. The ball comes out, but not after Jimmy hits the ground, which cannot cause a fumble. You hate to just see the ball on the ground anywhere anymore. And I can't tell who it is, but Tommy Williams, 19, the free safety, was on a safety blitz here. He was picked up by Tate Hancock, the running back. If Tate Hancock wouldn't have been there to make the block, that's, you never know. Tommy Williams might have been in there to make a defensive play for the Hornets. So a big third down conversion keeps the drive alive. Jimmy Ferris, five catches, 42 yards. First down and 10 now from the Hornets, 29-yard line. Drew back to throw again. Little screen play out to Ferris. This one's finally got a little bit of room as he gains eight, maybe nine yards on the play, and they're close to another first down. And even though there wasn't a lot of running room, Jimmy Ferris, with his quickness, uh, made something out of nothing. Really nice block here. Can't see by who. Right there, I think that was uh, Thatcher Soleil, or it might have been Lee Thorson, 79. That enabled him to pick up about another five yards. Drew, 20 for 30, 213 yards and an interception. Second down and two. They give it to Tate Hancock on the little delay. He's got enough for the first down. And the Grizzlies continue to move the ball, pick up yardage. They're also eating up some clock, which we talked about in the first half, which was a significant problem for them. The Grizz defense was on the field the whole exactly. time. Exactly. They're letting that defense, who's playing so well in this third quarter, to get a little breather. You know, we're talking, it's probably only about 55 degrees out there, but they're they're in the sun and they're chasing they're chasing Ricky Ray, who's a very elusive quarterback. So you're right, Grayson, good point. A breather uh, by the defense right now is just what the doctor ordered. 430 and counting in the third quarter. First down and 10 from the 17 yard line of the Hornets. Drew back to throw, swings it out to Tate Hancock. Has a little bit of room. Finds his way down the sidelines, down to the nine yard line. It's gonna be short of a first down by about a yard. Now you, you talk about the brother combinations that uh, Montana's had over the years. Of course, most recently you got the Coulter brothers, DJ and Kurt. Drew Miller here, a safety valve. Here you, speak, you see the speed of Tate Hancock, though he just turned on the horses. But I was gonna say to have a brother combination of Tate and Tanner Hancock, I know his parents are here at homecoming. That's gotta be a great feeling. Just a little bit speedier than the Coulter uh, duo. This is true. <laughs> Second down and two now for the Grizz. They give it to Tate again. He goes up the middle and into the end yeah, zone what a for nice a run. Montana for touchdown. That first down, touchdown. And now all of a sudden, very quickly, it's only taken less than a quarter for the Grizzlies to start flying their way back with the extra point yet to come. They're down six, 13 to 20. What's this all about? 
running game. Because of the success they've had, and this is a heck of an effort by Tate Hancock to get this touchdown. Not that big of a kid, good wheels, but Montana's running game has, I think, rejuvenated its passing game. Snyder in for the point after. It's up and it's good. And it's a whole new ball game now. Sac State up 20 to 14, but the Grizzlies have a lot of momentum. And these running plays, they all seem to be counter or delay plays, which seems to work well for Tate Hancock's abilities. We're going to take a break. Great game. We're in for a terrific finish, folks. Right now, the Montana Grizzlies down 20 to 14. The scoring drive for the Grizzlies, 11 plays, 76 yards, capped off by Tate Hancock's nine yard touchdown run. And it took almost four minutes. And the Grizzlies are back in this and they get a great play on coverage teams, taking down Charles Roberts at the 20. And I don't know that I would have my superstar running back returning kicks at this point. He has taken some big hits. He's already been nicked up earlier in this game. That could just be me. I talked about that earlier. <clears throat> Actually, Charles has only had two returns coming into the game. But uh, John Mitzel's up here helping us with stats, and John just made a good point. All five touchdowns in this football game have been rushing touchdowns. Not quite probably what we expected. Two by Tate Hancock, who's got 25 yards on eight carries now. As the Montana crowd, definitely a factor. First and 10, Ray to pass. He's got his man and a first down. I believe that's... I believe that's uh that's Johnson. That's Johnson, Mike Johnson with the catch. Gets a first down and gain of eleven. The Sacramento State now is faced with trying to stop this grizzly momentum. Right now in that situation, Montana had three cornerbacks in the game. Fourteen Demetrius Williams had come in, uh, along with Damon Parker and, and Calvin Coleman. But uh, pretty good answer to the touchdown. Uh, first down pass by Ricky Ray. First down and 10, Ray back to throw again, getting all kinds of time, going deep over the middle. That one high, and it's lucky for Ray because Trey Young was there. I think that was a miscommunication. Uh, the receiver, uh, number three, Lamont Webb, I think, looked like he broke out his pattern. He was supposed to keep going. Ricky Ray with pretty good time here. Herbert Hernandez, 97, the sophomore, with decent pressure. But no, I think he just lost. It looked like that was a knuckleball. Ricky Ray just lost that out of his hand. Ray, a pretty good game. 14 of 21, 133 yards. That's through the air. He's also done some damage on the ground. Second down and 10 now for the Hornets. And the flag blows. They may have run out of time. This may be a delay of game call. Yeah, I think you're right. And of course, uh, we talked about that earlier. There have been a delay well, by Sacramento State. Well, start. And on the offense, five yard early. It remains James second down. Lanelle, but as we talked about, Grace, what turned out to be a break for Montana because they recovered a fumble on the next play. They actually let the play go. Montana had a sack, then, whoops, sorry, didn't count. Five yard delay of game penalty. It was a false start call, so the Hornets are backed up to their own 27, brings up. Second down and 15. That's their eighth penalty for 52 yards now. Ray in the shotgun, drops back, looking to throw, getting some pressure up front, gets it off, finds his man. Gary Austin Jr., Boomer, just lassos and throws down to the turf. It's going to be short of a first down by about four yards. And Ricky Ray, the Sac State quarterback, showed some character there. Standing right in, he knew he was going to get hit hard, which he did by 59 Jeremiah. Boot and chain. And now it's the third and short situation for the Hornets. Noticing the Grizzlies are rotating some of their defensive linemen through. Andy Pedic now in the game. Set out the last two plays, so he's fresh. He's on the right side of the line on a third down and three. And Ray looks to throw. And he gets taken down by Corey Murtis. Big play on third down. And Corey Murtis with a sack last week, a sack this week. I can't emphasize enough, Corey Murtis is playing with broken ribs. 93, the senior from Great Falls. Also give credit, you can't see this, but what they were trying to do was isolate Lamont Webb on Calvin Coleman. 
And initially, Ray wanted to go to that, but Coleman had such good coverage. He had to pull it back down, allowed for the sack. Fourth down now, and they're gonna give the ball back to the Grizzlies. Of course, this is a situation might look for a fake. Probably not, but. I don't know. think so. <laughs> I don't think so. And again, there's another penalty flag on the another field. Another delay of game, another delay of game. And this is a delay of game, so yep. this will back them up. And this is an area of the field where that does hurt. Delay of game on the offense. Well, Five yard penalty. As you see the call, because down. Michael Westbrook back now has a really good chance to get them some good field position. Not only that, in a fourth and 16, if you, you can go for the block, and of course, unless it's roughing, it's only a five yard penalty. You can be more aggressive in, in the punt block category. Looks like they bring some people, get the punt away. Westbrook with the catch, gets smacked down immediately. And Michael Westbrook, number two, is showing a lot of character there too. He knew he was gonna get smacked. He didn't really have a lot of room. But he, the, the key, of course, is to catch the ball in the air and not let it pounce and get field position. And Montana sure does have that good field position. 36-yard punt sets up the Grizzlies now. First and 10 from their own 43-yard line. The crowd is back into this. This is what homecoming is about. That's the way they feel as they are back in this game. Montana scored on their last two possessions, trying to keep it going, a chance to take the lead. First and 10 from their own 43. Spencer Frederick in motion. Drew Miller gives it to Tate Hancock. Little bit of room. Gain of about four. And slowly but surely, they are establishing the running attack. And you know what I'm seeing about Tate Hancock as the game goes on? He's, he's more aggressive. You watch him hit this hole right now. Just, he's not, he's not look, he, he sees a hole, boom. He's making his cut. He's not trying to get fancy. And uh, he didn't, you know, there's a, that's a nice tackle by Sack, but He's had decent holes, but he's also, I think, more confident, more aggressive with the football. Brings up second down and six, a gain of four on the last play. Miller, back to throw, has time. Finds Spencer Frederick, who gets a block, and the big Scoby tight end is rumbling. Rumbling, rumbling, rumbling. He shows some pretty good speed for a guy that big. He is definitely a big tight end. That takes it down to the... 36 yard line of the Hornets as we take a look at the replay. Nice cut by the big guy. We said he's 6'3, 250. I got to think he is 6'3, 250. Every bit of that. See the defensive back going low there, getting Frederick in the air. Good idea, defensive backs. If you see big number 43 coming your way, think legs. 57 Park McAllister, middle linebacker for sack, goes out, limps out. Montana will once again. We, they put together three excellent drive here. It's the last time they had the possession here in this third quarter. 54 seconds left in the third quarter. First and 10 from the 36 of the Hornets. Miller back to throw. Gets some time, finds his receiver, Spencer Frederick. Short gain on the play of about three yards. And right now, you would have to think that Sac State's defense starting to get a little tired. I would think so. Darrell Williams back in at running back now, expelling the freshman Tate Hancock. And uh, Spencer Frederick back-to-back -back catches, gets a little break, and, and uh, goes to the sidelines as well. Second down and seven. 17 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll see if they get the playoff. I think they, they're going to get the playoff here, probably the last of the third quarter. Four wide receivers. Jimmy Ferris in motion. Miller back to throw, but he's going to be brought down by Blyle Watkins. Drew Bajetti also there on the play. That's going to force them into a third and long situation. And that, that goes with the third quarter, but Montana making a run at it. 14 un unanswered points here in this third quarter. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Welcome back. Grizzlies have the ball third and 14 at Sac State's 40-yard line. They've had the ball a lot in the second half. Nine minutes, 44 seconds. While well, Sac State has had it just a little over five minutes. Sac State showing blitz. And they come. Picked up. Drew Miller has time. Finds Jimmy Ferris. 
they say incomplete, out of bounds. There's a flag there is a down. flag down on the play. And Sac State's guys are clapping, so I probably wouldn't have counted anyway. It's going to be a hold. There's the indication. It's and a hold on the Grizzlies. More than likely turn it down, bring up a fourth down situation. Uh, like to see a replay of this one, guys, if you got one after we hear the... On the offense, the penalties refused, brings up fourth down. There you go. Here's uh, Drew Miller looking for Jimmy Ferris all the way, it looks like. And there's the hold right there. It's more like a tackle. That was the hold. Jimmy Ferris, one foot in bounds, and he was not. It was a good call by the official. He was not in bounds. So Reedy back to punt, trying to pin Sac State. This one's going to drift into the end zone and out of the end zone. Reedy not pleased with that punt. So Sac State stops Montana for the second time in the second half. As we start the fourth quarter, Montana still down 20 to 14. The Sac State now can't be real conservative anymore. Well, if you're Actually, they, they really haven't been as conservative as we thought they might. No, they really haven't been. They've, they've gone down the field, tried to throw the ball deep. What you're looking for here, if you're Montana, of course, is uh, another turnover. We talked about that earlier, how Montana needed one, got a break, capitalized, and scored on it. First and 10 from the 20. Ricky Ray in the shotgun, hands it off to Charles Roberts, who takes it out, spins his way, but only gains about two yards on the play. They continue to bottle up Charles Roberts pretty well. He's got 60 yards on 14 carries. And in Montana, we talked about negative three. Now they're at plus 17 yards rushing. Not that big of a deal, but Tate Hancock, the freshman, eight carries for 28 yards, two touchdowns for Montana. Here you see Roberts. Uh, Dave DeCoit slows him down. Second down and eight from their own 22. Lamont Webb in motion. They run him out, they throw to Scott Town, he cuts his way up the field. It's gonna be close to a first down. I believe he has it, at least where they're marking it right now. He will have the first down by about a half a yard. Yeah, nice catch by 12 Town. Very good hands. And he does have it, first down for the Hornets. And uh, Sac State looking now to more of the quick hitter stuff, which they, they were, I think, much more effective with in the first half. Instead of trying to go down the field, maybe try to go short passing game or the middle of the field. So first and 10 now for the Hornets. Little option play. Ray pitching it out to Roberts. Nothing there. He sits down after a gain of three. Looked like it could be a big play for them early on, but as it progressed, the defense stringing it out pretty well. Well, not that bad of a move by Roberts. Here you see the option. They ran this very successfully once earlier. Nowhere to go, and he stayed in bounds. If you're sacked, that's probably what you want. Keep that clock going. Both teams with all three timeouts remaining in this game in the second half. Second down and six. Back to pass is Ray, he's got plenty of time, rolling out, it collapses. Fires has his man, Scott Town, who is down to the 46 yard line of the Hornets. And now Sac State beginning to move the ball a little bit. Well, you gotta be impressed with Ricky Ray's mobility. Uh, Montana putting pressure on him, 92 Tyler Martin getting double teamed here. But you can see Ray, that's not that easy to do as a right-handed quarterback. Run to your left and throw the ball. Town though, nice pattern. Mi sorry, missed. I didn't know there was a penalty on the play. I missed it. But Ricky Ray's mobility is a huge factor. Running to his left, right-handed quarterback, not that easy. Town came back to the ball, and I'll tell you what, uh, Montana's defense had shut him down until this drive. Sac State looking pretty good, Grace. First down and 10 from the 45 of the Grizzlies. Charles Roberts in motion. Nobody in the backfield now. They just dump it off to him. He makes a couple of moves to make guys miss. Then Vince Huntsberger gets him out. They're lucky to get anything out of that play, but that's just vintage Charles Roberts as he gets five on the play. That just shows how special a football player he is. He really shouldn't have gained anything on this play, if maybe a yard. 
It's almost like a lateral once again, and watch this shake and bake right here. Dave DeCoyt in great position runs by him and made something out of nothing. Second down and four now. Sac State trying to pad their six point lead, driving on the Grizzlies. Barton now in the backfield, back. They throw it out, they get the first down as he hits his receiver number six. And that is uh, Mike Johnson again. Doesn't, didn't have a whole lot of catches coming into the game, but has three today. That's good for another Sac State first down. They were bottled up there pretty much the entire third quarter, but they've come out and got something going, and the Grizzly defense now needs a big stop. First down and 10 from the 33 of the Grizzlies. Ray back to pass, gets pressured, rolls out, buys himself some time. It runs out though, he just throws it out of bounds. And that was good coverage downfield by the Grizz defensive backs. But, but once again, I don't mean to harp on it. You can, Ricky Ray's mobility is just huge. He, I don't, if we could count the time he had here, it was incredible. Obviously, as you said, Grayson, excellent coverage because he had some time to throw the football. He got rid of it just in time, realizing he really didn't have anybody. Just threw that out of bounds. 41, the linebacker, Matt Steinau there with the pressure. Junior from El Toro, California. So it brings up a second down and 10. Charles Roberts now in the backfield. Grizz show blitz. They come, the pass comes out, it's incomplete. Herbert Fernandez making a quick play on the stop. If he had almost just stood where he was, would have had an interception, but you can't blame him for, for the hustle play here. Yeah, you take a look at it again. That's a defensive end on the pass coverage there. That's kind of an unusual look there. That wasn't going anywhere anyway. And uh, Fernandez, a, a sophomore from San Diego, nice play, but oftentimes, too many times you see the DBs or linebackers, in this case, DN, looking to make that hit instead of looking for the ball. Third down and 10. A huge third down play for both teams. Montana takes a timeout. They don't believe that they did, but Montana takes a timeout, and so will we. 11.45 left in the game. Montana down. 20 to 14. Welcome back. Huge play for both teams. Sac State just outside of field goal position. Third down and 10 at the Grizzlies. 33. And look for 32 Roberts to maybe get the ball here. Andy no. Pita coming around the end, chasing Ricky Ray. I'm not sure he knows it. And Andy Pita takes him down. That's a great hustle play by Andy Pedic. Never gave up, never gave up. Ricky Ray wanted to slow it down and set his feet to throw the football. Andy Pedic didn't give him that chance. Take a look again, coming all the way around the offensive line. And right now, Sac State debating on what to do. That's a great play by Andy Pedic, and that's a sack for the senior from Helena. He showed some terrific speed there, just flat out getting a chance to get Ricky Ray. Andy Pita came into the game with a team high five sacks. I think he's got a couple today. They're around seven on the year. So Stacks, Sac State will now try to pin the Grizzlies. They get this one off. This one's going to be pretty close. It's going towards the end zone, and it is in the end zone. So the Grizzlies will start out with it at the 20-yard line, down six with 10.57 left in the game. And the Grizzlies may have allowed some yards. But boy, they sure held up when they had to, keeping Sac State off the board on what seemed to be a pretty impressive drive there for a while. Of course, the University of Montana picked first in the preseason polls by the Big Sky Conference media and the Big Sky Conference coaches. This is what champions are made of right now. To come back from a deficit, of course, they've made back part of that ground. They need to score one more time, take the lead, put the pressure back on Sac State. They got 80 yards to do it. Darrell Williams in the game now at running back. Four wide receivers, though, for the Grizzlies on first and 10 from their own 20. Drew Miller back to pass. 
fires, has his man, Tanner Hancock. Actually, that's Jimmy Ferris, pardon me. Gets over the 30-yard line to the 31, a gain of 11. That's enough for first down for the Montana Grizzlies. And Jimmy Ferris getting up pretty slowly there. That one hurt. He got took quite a pop. Got double teamed. The senior from Lewiston just having a great year. Here you see Drew sets and just right in between a couple defenders. Jimmy paid the price for that one. Took a pretty big hit, but gained 11. Makes it first down and 10 from their own 31 now. Miller back to throw, strings it out to Tanner Hancock, gets a block, makes a move, stays on his feet. And a good play, a gain of seven, almost eight on the play, so that'll bring up second down in about three. And what, what gives Tanner Hancock a chance is the block by number 18, T.J. Okers. See it right there. That gives him about five, six more yards. Nice cut here by Tanner to pick up even a couple more. That block against Santee Hall, the impressive outside linebacker for Sac State. Brings up second down and three now for the Grizzlies. 10-24 left in the game, down six. They show blitz, Miller gives it to Daryl Williams, who just goes down right at the line of scrimmage. Taken down there by number 35. And that is Brent Gutierrez. A backup linebacker makes the play for the Hornets. Both teams playing a lot of kids on defense. Uh, you have to, just to try to keep some fresh bodies in there. Both teams also, I think, gifted with pretty good depth, especially on defense. Big third down, third and four on their own 37. Four wide receivers, two to each side. They're showing blitz. Atu Molden in motion. They pick up the blitz. Miller fires over the middle, finds Atu Molden enough for the first down and more out to the 47-yard line of Sac State. So obviously you just saw the time, 9.32, plenty of time. Drew Miller looking all the way to Atu. Nice grab by the 6'2 junior. And once again, uh, these Sac State defensive backs make you pay when you catch the football. Atu Molden, five catches for 62 yards. First and 10 for the Grizzlies. Miller, back to throw. Going deep, has Jimmy Ferris who gets a hand on him, but just not quite enough air under the ball. Jimmy had just beaten his man, unable to bring it in. Jimmy Ferris, this is his favorite pattern, fly pattern. And Drew, just almost perfect. Jimmy reaches up one hand, maybe about another yard shorter. That's a touchdown. Drew, 26 of 38 now, 269 yards. Another good game for him, but right now what he's looking for is another Montana touchdown. Second down and 10 from their own 47-yard line. Drew hands it off to Darrell Williams. Gets about three yards on the play. The crowd doesn't like the call. They want to see Drew drop back and throw it some more. Well, Daryl struggled. Uh, he hasn't had, I think, his biggest gain so far has been about a three-yarder. And what that does is just puts the pressure on the offense to throw the ball in a third and seven situation. So as you said, third down and seven at the 50-yard line. Big third down for both teams. Drew back to pass. He's got Darrell Williams in the flat. He hits him. Williams makes his way, takes the hit, and then just pounds his way forward to get the first down. Great second effort by Darrell Williams. Hasn't cut a lot of passes this year. We've talked about how effective that play. That's almost a safe call. But that's Darrell Williams' second catch of the season. Good coverage downfield. That was not his primary target. And I'll tell you what. When he, on the first hit, the ball was almost yard loose from Darrell on that play. Close, on, almost fumbled it. First down and 10 from Sac State's 40-yard line now. Drew Miller drops back, looking to throw again. Goes over the middle, incomplete to Tanner Hancock. And I think he either threw it in the ground or the ball slipped. 
it looked to me like there was pretty good coverage on that play. Tanner Hancock uh, hasn't had a, caught a, a pass in a while. Of course, Jimmy Ferris was, uh, has been the go-to guy lately, Atu Molden as well. I think that ball just slipped. It looked like a knuckleball, but the, there also the coverage was there. Brings up second down and 10 from the 40. 7.53 left in this ball game. Montana looking. Good pressure, gets it out to Daryl Williams. Daryl trying to fight forward. He gets thrown out of bounds pretty hard and there is a flag down on that play. And I think that is going to be a, an unsportsmanlike conduct thrown against, I believe that's number nine. Gabarell, I think. Gabarell. Yeah. And you can see the officials conferring on it. There it is. Big call by Montana. That's Boy, a huge break. That the, there's only one word for that, and that's stupid. And Daisley 43 was on the blitz. Drew Miller took a good hit. You can see Williams is he's out of bounds right. He's out of bounds right there. And all the player had to do was just let go of him. That was Tommy Williams. They made a great play to limit him to just a few yards and then just got stupid and threw him out. I mean, your coaching staff, I know they were yelling at the refs right there as you see them, but when they see that next week and looking at the game film. That's John Volok, the head coach for Sac State. You can bet Walk, Tommy Williams has got to hear about it. Walking next to the linesman, not appreciating that call. It looked pretty obvious from up here. First down and 10, 7.43 and rolling. Uh, they're calling timeout. I think they're having trouble setting up the chains maybe. Officials timeout. Maybe. Boy, they had Daryl Williams stopped for very little game. Would have brought up a uh, third down situation, but Grizzlies say, hey, we'll take it. Yeah, they're talking about the, the, the ball was spotted in the wrong place. And uh, that's the delay here. So the Grizzlies continue to move. Another impressive drive so far. They need to cap it off with a touchdown. Down six with 735 and counting left in the fourth quarter. Drew Miller drops back, looking over the middle, finds T.J. Okers, takes some big hits, but makes his way down to the 13-yard line of Sacramento State. And so far in this second half, knock on wood, all of the players, receivers, and backs have done a good job hanging on to the ball. Well, and, and look where Montana's going a lot of the time. They're going in the middle, too. That's what Sac State's given them. That's where they're going. Uh, T.J. Olkers, I think, with his third catch of the football game. Only had seven coming in. Three catches for 50 yards. Okay, thanks. I was close. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 13. Miller gives it to Williams, shakes the first tackler, has to deal with about six more, unable to do so. They'll give him forward progress. Picked up a so couple. Maybe a yard maybe gain one. on the play. Yep. So Montana, of course, right now could settle for a field goal on the 13. It would be a 30-yard field goal, but they want to get a lot more points out of this. Only second down. Second down and 10. Gained only about a foot or two on that last play. Miller looking to throw, has time, finds Daryl Williams. Ugh, absolutely nothing. In fact, he loses yardage on the play, about a yard and a half. That's going to bring up a huge third down play with six minutes left in this game. Well, right now, if you're Montana, you're looking at probably two different guys. The first being number eight, Jimmy Ferris. He's so consistent. And the second, maybe T.J. Okers, who's had a very good game today and seems to have had the ability to get open and find creases. This was about the area of the field. Last year in double overtime, Nick Walker found Atu Molden in the corner of the end zone. Atu Molden is at the bottom of your screen, just off the screen. Third down, he's looking that way. Oh, and he's there, but unable to make the catch. He's looking for a pass interference call. Well, that's, that's a pass I think Atu Molden probably would like to have again, Adam. Well thrown. It just looked like he took his eye off of it. Drew Miller lost it up. Very exact what you said, Grace, just like last year. And uh, it, 
they're going to go for the field goal here. About two yards further back than I talked about, 32-yarder because of that uh, loss and that one completion. Big field goal, though. Big field goal. you got to score right here. 5.27 left in the game. Snyder's kick is good. And that cuts the lead now to just three. So it's 2017. Sac State with 5.23 left. We are in for a very exciting finish. Stay with us. 2017 Sac State. Welcome back. Fourth quarter, Sacramento State up 20 to 17. Montana just kicked the field goal. And with 5.23 left, they will count on their defense to stop Sac State and try to get the ball back to Drew Miller in the offense. Chris Snyder kicks it deep. Lamont Webb, returnable kick at the four. Comes up, does a little dancing. Oof, down to about the 21. Couple times it looked like they might be able to knock the ball away there. 5-12 left, and the Hornets offense will take the field. Now your defense has to make a stop. That's the bottom line. Montana has to at least get close enough to kick a field goal. And how ironic if we would go to another overtime game as we did last year with Sacramento State. I don't know if a lot of the fans here, I don't know if they could take that. But right now, they would they would love it. They'd love to you got to remember, Montana pitching a shutout here in the second half. Sac State has not scored in the second half. Ray in the shotgun, runs the option, he's got a crease, it closes, he gains, looks like six yards on the play. And if they can, they're certainly gonna try to keep it on the ground to eat up the clock. And it looked like Adam Boomer tried to strip the ball along with the tackle. This is a pretty effective play for them because Roberts is so dangerous and Ray's pretty versatile as well. Yeah, that was Boomer who tried to get the strip. Four thirty-eight and counting in the game. Second down and four. They give it to Charles Roberts. He falls down short of the line of scrimmage. A couple of yards. He loses two on the play, and that's going to bring up third down and six. Huge play for both teams coming up. Well, Roberts really had nowhere to go. That's why he slipped. He wanted to cut to, to his left, but there was a couple Montana players there right now. Right now in a passing situation, I look for either Charles Roberts to get, go for a little swing pass or 12, Town, the inside receiver on the right, real good possession guy. The crowd is fired up. 3.58 left. Ray hands it off to Charles Roberts. Looking for the first down. He is going he to be well it. short. He, he fumbled it. the ball. And Montana recovers. Charles Robert fumbles the ball. Somebody is down for the Grizzlies, though. Somebody is hurt. Yeah, I can't tell who it is. Just all kinds of madness going down around that part of the field. The Grizzlies do have the ball. It is Pedic. Andy Pedic who recovers. What a game he's had. But right now... The attention turns towards the injured player down on the field. I did not see who it was going down. Here's the replay. I think it's 27, Damon Parker. Uh, at least there's a seven on there, of course. DP, the, se the senior cornerback starter for the Grizzlies, that'd uh, be a huge loss if he was hurt. We're gonna take a break, folks. Breaking the action, 358 left in the game. Montana is gonna take over deep in Hornets territory down 20 to 17. We are back, it was Damon Parker who was down on the field, he walked off under his own power, appears to be okay. First down and 10 for the Grizzlies on the 24 yard line of Sac State. 348 left in the game, Miller looking to throw, has his man, Tanner Hancock open on the sidelines, knocked out of bounds at the 12 and a half yard line. Enough for a first down. Well, it's kind of a catch 22 if you're Montana right now as we see the replay, Drew Miller just waits for it to develop bullet pass to Tanner Hancock who's five yards in the open at least. Gets out of bounds, but there's so much time. You don't know, you want to score right away. You want to score a touchdown, of course, but you also want to eat a little clock up. The clock is stopped right now at 342. On the 13-yard line, the Grizz start out with it, first and 10. 
Jimmy Ferris in motion. It's going to be a reverse to Ferris. He's got a little room. Needs to beat somebody. He fumbles the ball. And Sac State recovers. Brandon Coleman jumps onto it. And Jimmy Ferris, who, who's, you know, he's got you there. He's helped get you there. 333 to left. Montana knocking on the door. Jimmy Ferris fumbles on an end around play. Here we go. And it just oh, slipped just, out of his hands. Just fighting for yards. He just slips. Uh, and it comes out. The one bright spot to this is something you mentioned earlier. There is enough time on the clock. 333 and two timeouts left that if the defense stops them, there is still plenty of time for the Grizzlies to make something happen, but the defense has to come up with a stop. Ray in the shotgun, first and 10, hands it off to Charles Roberts, dancing around, looking for something, gets knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line, two yards short of the first down. And Montana made the cardinal mistake there. You've got to, to contain him inside. Don't let him go outside. He put on a couple moves and then uh, put on the wheels and went around the right side. You need to force him inside. And uh, he's, of course, he's dangerous whenever he touches the football. There you see a Sats, 19 carries, 72 yards. Roberts did make the mistake of going out of bounds on that play, so that stopped the clock at 326. Ray now on the option play looking for something. He gets the first down. And now you'll see Sacramento State start milking the clock a bit. Um, Montana with two timeouts. You might remember they, they had to burn one timeout with an equipment timeout uh, charged to Montana. I'm not sure if it was a mouthpiece or what, but right now you'll see Ricky Ray take that 25-second clock down to two, three seconds, teed off all the time possible. 3.05 left in the game. Ray, back to throw, swings it out to Charles Roberts. Tries to make a play, takes a big hit though from Dan Orzotti. Loses a couple of yards on the play. Oh, and he's lucky to hang on to that one. And that was a, once again, as I said earlier, you need to force him inside. And that's what he had to do there. There wasn't a lot of running room there. Matt Steinhaus, the one who forced him inside, 41. Timeout by the, by the Grizzlies. Grizzlies take one of their two remaining timeouts, so they've got one left with 248 left in the game, trying to save a little bit of time for their offense. Well, I've got to think that uh, when you look at Chris Snyder as a kicker, he's got 45-yard range, maybe even 50-yard range. So if you're Montana and you can get the ball to, you know, around the 30-yard line, that's a 47-yard field goal. That's what you'll have to do, of course, before you do that, you've got to get the ball back. But, uh, you know, another crucial turnover. We, we've harped about Mo Montana has played almost flawless offensive football in the second half. Of course, the defense has played huge. Sac State hasn't scored in the second half. But uh, Jimmy's turnover came at the worst possible time, just when they were threatening to go in and take the lead from the Hornets. Huge break for Sacramento State. But with 2.48 left, they're faced with a second down and 11, and they want to keep the ball on the ground and milk the clock. At the same time, though, they will need to pick up a first down if they want to run the clock out and not give the Grizzlies another chance. Ray in the shotgun. Going to run that option again. Very effective. They stop him after a gain of six. It's going to be short of the first down, though, by about five yards and a huge third down play coming up. Uh, the officials blow. I don't know what they've got going here. Maybe the clock never started. Maybe it didn't. It started too long. Or maybe it's a timeout for that matter. I can't believe that Montana would burn their last one with a third and five, but maybe that's what happened. Yep. They're going to use that last one, which makes this play that much bigger because they have to stop them here. Otherwise, Sacramento State's going to be able to run out the clock. So this is an absolutely huge play, third down and four. And if you're Sac State, I'd run the option again. We, Montana has not had great success stopping that for a loss. They've, they've stopped it for a you know, four or five yard gain at times. But uh, I think that so far has been the safest and maybe the best play for Sac State as far as picking up uh, this first down. You might see that option play. It's 
So Adam Boomer and company, including the crowd here, will try to help the Grizzlies out. On a huge third down and four with 2.41 left in the game. Right now, this is definitely the play of the game. Yeah, it's do or die right now for the Montana defense. Do or die right now for the Sac State offense. Third down and four. They call a timeout. Sac State doesn't like something they saw, so they called a timeout. And the crowd will have to continue and wait for this one. 2.41 left. And a very exciting game. The Grizzlies able to make a game out of this after being down 20 to nothing at halftime have scored 17 unanswered. But right now, 17 is not enough. They need to stop Sacramento State on third down and four. They have no timeouts left. And Ricky Ray, the Sac State quarterback, obviously saw something he didn't like on that particular call and wisely called a timeout, talked to his coaches, say, hey, I'm not sure if that'll work. Here's why. What else do you have in the, in the playbook? It's a very tough position for them to be in. Do you put the ball up at this point? Five yards is a lot to get on the ground. It's about four and a half. You do have one of the great running backs, though, in all of college football history. And I would be a little bit surprised if they don't give it to him again. They option. do run that option like you called, and the Grizzlies stop it short and fumbled it. He feeds it to, to David Parker. And David Parker's going to take it for the Montana Grizzlies touchdown. Look at Ricky Ray. He's laying on the turf. He can't believe it. They're mad. They're saying he was down, but you know what? I don't think he was. I'm not sure he was, and why would you even attempt to eat, pitch it eat at any the point? ball and punt it. Montana with a huge break. And of course, right now, this point after touchdown makes it, a, they, if Sac State would have to score a touchdown if the Grizzlies kicked this game. Here's a play, here's a play right here. He did, he pitched it. He pitched it, clearly pitched it to Damon Parker. The wrong guy he was trying to pitch to Charles Robert. Damon Parker, who, who left, left the game with an injury. And here's Chris Snyder for the all-important PAT. 23-20. High snap. Brought down very well by T.J. Okers. Brings it down. Snyder puts it through. And the Grizzlies have a four-point lead, 24-20. As you take another look at this play, Ricky Ray... With Andy Pedic draped all over his back, gives it to Damon Parker, whose legs are feeling just fine. Just right fine, right? Thank you very much. But you know what Ricky Ray was? He was just trying to make a great play. He was trying to make a great play. His knee wasn't down. You can see his knee wasn't down. Ricky Ray knew Sac State needed a first down. Montana with no timeouts left. On, now on the other side of the coin, Sac State will get the ball back. They've got two timeouts, 232 remaining. As you can see on the clock here, in college football, that's an eternity because, as you know, first down, stop the clock in college football. Exactly. It's a big deal. Exactly. Ricky Ray now, his biggest nemesis is himself. He has mentally got to rebound from making a crucial mistake that could cost the Hornets the game to now being the leader that he was in the first half and putting together a big drive. Well, and, of course, the point differential, as we talked about, they need to score a touchdown. Another important thing that probably can't be underemphasized right now, field position right now. If Montana can get a nice kickoff, keep the Sac State, you know, back maybe behind their own 30-yard line, that's 70 yards they've got to go, but still, there is plenty of time in this football game. Nevertheless, you can't, Grace, underestimate a huge, huge break for the Montana Grizzlies at this point. A lot of turnovers in this game. It just depends on what half you've been watching, who's been committing them. Little squib kick. They decide to squib kick it. Wooster make, makes a bad play there. That's a mistake to just, he just swallowed it up and sat on his knees. He easily could have gained five to 10 yards, but 
the squib kick actually works out fine right there. Keeps them at the 24-yard line. Still plenty of time, only, though. Only took three, three seconds. Took three seconds. He got two timeouts left. They got to go 76 yards to score a touchdown to regain the lead in this football game. They being the Sac State Hornets, who at 1-2 and two in the Big Sky Conference, they cannot afford another loss. Montana, of course, 1-0 and oh in the Big Sky Conference at this point. Ray in the shotgun, three wide receivers. The crowd is a factor. Drops back, finds his man, Gary Austin Jr. Steps out of bounds after a gain of three. It does stop the clock, but gains of three just aren't going to get it done. Oh, well, yeah, gains of three down to 76 yards. Uh, they'll, they'll run out of plays in about f five or six plays later, although only took six seconds. Quick hitter by Sac State. You still have to be really, really leery and cognizant of 32 Charles Roberts. They've got two timeouts. He's going to get the ball sometime in this drive. Absolutely. Second down and seven. They run the option play again. And the this flag went up. I'm not sure if the play counted anyway. That's why Ricky Ray slowed down. I don't think this play is going to count. Which tends to make me think it's, it's a procedure of some sort if they, if they call the... The, if they threw the flag right away as they did. The crowd is absolutely definitely a record crowd out here as the call is about to be made. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Senior penalty on Sac penalty. State. And as Grayson out. just mentioned, it's a record crowd, 19,264. The previous record, 19,248, set in the opener against Hofstra. And of course, the reason that record uh, occurred was because of the 165 firefighters that uh, the University of Montana led into the football game. All right, here we go. Second down and 12 from their own 22-yard line. Four wide receivers out there for the Hornets. Ray back to pass, gets pressured, and gets almost taken down. Oh, now he fumbles. He fumbled the ball, but Sac State recovers. Andy Pedic brought him down, and Sac State falls on it. That's number 70. And the clock's still running, and Sac State's not calling it, using it. And here they finally do. They do call the timeout, Sac State. There's a Sac player down, but he's up. Here, it's just a frenzied attack. A Andy Pedic once again with a strip. Recovery by Sac State. We've got another timeout. Two minutes even. And Grayson, this may be the longest two minutes of any Grizzly fan's life right now. Third and 12. So, so of course, you got to think Sac State whether they get the first down here, we'll probably maybe have to go for it on fourth down. You don't know. Yeah, right here, there's a lot of decisions to be made. Do you try to eat up the full 12? It's not that much more than 10 on this play, or do you just try to put yourself in position, picking up maybe six, seven, eight yards yeah. to go for it on fourth down? Um, right now, they're not getting a whole lot of time to throw, so you got to wonder how many chances are you going to get. At least that's what I would be thinking if I'm one of the coaches. I say... You know, let's try to get the 12 here. We may not get another chance right now with their pass rush. Well, they've got all their pass, their pass receivers in the game. I don't even think Charles Roberts is in the football game, which kind of surprises me. But they're going with a with a nobody in the backfield. They're telling you we're going to throw the ball. Come and get us. Five wide receivers. Andy Pedic is 37 at the top of your screen. They throw the little screen play, just looking for some yards. There is a penalty flag down. And I think this may be against Sac State as a hold. I think you might be right. I think uh, uh, Tyler Martin might have been held on the play. And that's the call. And now what do you do? You, it, it'd be fourth down at the 26, so it'd be about uh, fourth and nine. You got to take the penalty. The Grizzlies, it looked like they're motioning that they are going to decline and well, force fourth down. Yep, you're right, they declined it. I, I would think you'd push him further back, but then again, now it's down to one play. It's down to one play, and, and you could go either way, but this is definitely a statement made by head coach Joe Glenn about the confidence of his defense to stop them on one play. And once again, Charles Roberts not in the game. Fourth down and eight. Four wide receivers, this is it, folks. Rolls out, has some time, looking towards the middle of the field. And he gets it. the first down. Gets over by about a yard. 
And the clock stops to reset the chains at 129. Ricky Ray's mobility, what killed him in the first half, keeps the Hornets alive here in the second half. As the Grizz are rotating defensive linemen in, they need another sack, another big play. Minute 20 left. Clock is rolling. Ray dropping back, firing to the side. Almost picked off by Calvin Coleman. What, what a courageous play for Calvin to go ahead and bite on that and break it up. What you got to make sure is there, if you go for the pick, get both hands on it. Either pick it or knock it down. Here you see Ray. That's a tough pass. It's a thrown a long way. You make a mistake here, and you're going to pay for it. As you can see in the corner of your TV, a minute 12, lots of time still for Sac State. Calvin about a half foot away from picking that one off. Second down and 10. A minute 12, Charles Roberts as a receiver now. They throw the screen. Great play made by Herbert Fernandez who read that. Didn't even go up the field with the pass rush. Knocking down Lamont Reb inbounds. I'm absolutely amazed that Sac State doesn't burn their last time out. We got a third and 11. They're about to right now, but they did. They led about 15 seconds, tick off the clock. They're at 54 seconds now and a third and 11. <laughs> you know, how many timeouts have we had here in about the last two minutes? I think this is our fifth timeout. And uh, Grace, I'll tell you what, uh, if Montana pulls this out and, and their chances are still pretty good, obviously uh they've got to thank uh thank the man above maybe a little that was a big break ricky ray if you if you missed it earlier a big third down situation he's about two yards short he's going down andy pedic has him wrapped he pitches damon parker the corner who had gone out earlier we thought he could have been seriously hurt he laterals right to damon parker damon parker takes it in from about 30 yards out for the montana touchdown to give the Grizzlies the first lead in this football game, their first lead. The defense was put in a lot of bad spots early in this game. That led to the 20-0 lead, but they played well throughout, containing a very dangerous team, and now they've got the chance to win it. And now what Grizzlies. you want to do is, no matter what, if they do make a play, keep stop them, them and keep them in bounds. Third and 11. Andy Pita coming around the corner. Ray looking for a place to run. He's got some room. He does get the first down, but he is kept inbounds. The, ch the clock stops for the chains to set at 44 seconds. The chains are moving now. And Ray's legs are the only thing keeping the Hornets in this game. Again, field goal won't do it. The Hornets have to have a touchdown. If Montana can get one sack here, they're in really good shape. If they can just stop him one time behind the line of scrimmage. Ray throws it out. And, and now Short what you want to do is just to Lamont Webb, who dink around, inbounds. run some clock. Sorry, Grace. And that doesn't get a first down. You've got to throw for first downs at this point because that's 24, 23, 22, 21. He's going to spike it now to stop the clock. 19 seconds. Spikes it at 19 seconds. Bit of a mistake there. Of course, the ball was thrown low, so really nothing Webb could do about it but by going down and not getting the first down clock yeah. rolled and they lost a lot of time on that last play for they, four yards they did and and the thing is though it doesn't matter it's third down they're probably going to get three more shots at it and uh at the third down situation this might be the time that you throw it up th throw a Hail Mary pass get into the end zone try to get an interference try to get something called because then if that doesn't work at least you still have the fourth down to pick up a first down but then again you're talking 19 seconds to move the ball 47 yards. Good point, good point. Third and four, Lamont Webb in motion. Three wide receivers to the top as I think they're going to try to air it out. But Ricky Ray, oh, somehow he stays alive. Throws it out to Charles Roberts being chased by Herbert Fernandez. Roberts wisely runs out of bounds because there's no way he's going to score. With nine seconds left, fourth down again. This is and you throw got it as it, far got, as you can right now. Because, or do you go for a first down, maybe you, you, you need what? Fourth and nine. Go for a 10 yarder, then go for the bomb. Whatever happens, if you, you don't forget the first down, it's over anyway. With no timeouts, they've got to go to the end zone because once, even if they get that first down, enough time's going to go off the clock. Enough time is going to happen to snap it. Three man rush, prevent defense. Look at the defensive backs for Montana. There are three defensive backs sitting on the 10 yard line for Montana. As Ray drops back, 
plenty of time to throw. Goes over the middle and it's intercepted by Damon yeah. Parker, who sits down and the Grizzlies are going to win this football game as Damon Parker becomes the hero of the game and it took him all of a minute 30 to become the hero. High five by here, buddy. <laughs> what a great win by Montana. If not, a little luck of the Irish and head coach Joe Glenn. You see Damon Parker, DP they call him, getting congratulations. And what a great football game by him and the Grizzly defense who pitched a shutout here in this second half. We can't underestimate the Montana defense, which did not allow Folks, you want to know State what the score. There it is, Damon Parker going up as they tried to just pick up some yards. Didn't happen, and that is the ball game. What a fantastic, Incredible. entertaining Incredible. game. Homecoming crowd. I, I hope this was worth the trip for those of you who had to come <laughs> from out of town. I hope this, you know, made your day okay. There's going to be a lot of partying going on in Missoula, Montana, as Joe Glenn meets up with John Volick. They shake hands. And Sac State, they've come in here two straight years. They have really given the Grizzlies all they could handle. And the Grizzlies pull out a huge victory, still undefeated in the Big Sky Conference. And DP, one of the shortest guys on the team, but guys with a huge heart, comes up with two big plays to seal the victory. Now, back to Grizzly Gridiron Classics. The year 2000 was another banner year for Montana, as the Grizzlies finished 13-2 and advanced to the Division I-AA National Championship game before losing a close contest with Georgia Southern. As always, thanks for joining us this week for Grizzly Gridiron Classics, and next week we jump to 2002, the year after the Grizzlies again won the National Championship with a regular season thriller against Portland State on the road. See you then.